A year after they captured their 21st men's NCAA indoor title, the Razorbacks are back. SEC Indoor Track and Field Championship Kobe, the Arkansas Razorbacks. Last month, the Hogs showed no signs of slowing down, conquering and dominating the SEC again. Now the Hogs have a chance to defend their national crown in Boston as the nation's best look to lay their own claim to the title of national champion. What school's name will be engraved on the trophy? The culmination of the indoor season starts now. Please come to Boston for the track meet, a city rich in history. Tea party to Tom Brady, Paul Revere to Steven Tyler, and more of it coming. We're competing for a national title at the track at New Balance, because this is the 2024 NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championship. 17 events for the men and the women here on ESPN's Family Networks. It is going to be wicked good. Welcome to Boston, everyone. Glad to have you with us. I am John Anderson. I'd like to point out that they've had 127 marathons in this town, dating back to 1896. This is the first time they've ever had the NCAA Championship track meet. As far as I can find out, like if they had it, it was during the 13 colonies and not during the 50 states. It's a split meet. The men will go first. That is followed by the women. It's a new building here, the track at New Balance, and it is filled with great athletes, which means we're going to have a great team race, especially on the men's side. Texas Tech, they come in ranked number one. They're really fast. If they're going to win it, they'll do it with sprinters. NAU, they're a contender. If they're going to do it, they'll because of their distance guys. And then you have the top end of the SEC. Florida and Arkansas and they'll piece this thing together with points from jumpers and from throwers and from sprinters and from distance guys. We've got a whole bunch of stuff here. Dwight Stones, Blair Overton, Dan O'Brien on call. And guys, settle in because I think you're going to be here through all three heats of the 4x4 to decide this thing. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you be? It's a national championship. And, John, you're so right about those teams being in contention. And the main thing this year, as opposed to past years, Texas Tech has come in here number one several times. They just didn't get the bodies through to the final. Dan O'Brien, that is not the case this time. They really performed on day one. Well, yeah, I was going to say, you, you, you they have found themselves in this position before. Uh, number one team coming in, and they just didn't get it done. But this year, they got everybody through yesterday. And there you see the power and the strength of Texas Tech. Terrence Jones in the 60-meter, 200-meter. Fastest time in the country in both those events. DeAndre Swint, they're looking for points for him in the 60. And Caleb Dean, he qualified in the 60 and the 60 hurdles as well. Coach West, Coach West Kitley says this is a different team. We got a little swagger, a little attitude, we're ready to go. And Laura, it looks like they are the team to beat, but there are people that have the bodies here that if everything went right and things didn't go totally right for Texas Tech, they could step in. Certainly, John mentioned Florida. They have the second most scoring opportunities of any team coming into the final day of competition. Then distance dominant NAU eyeing their best team finish in history and certainly headlined by the performance of Nico Young. Continued his spectacular indoor season with an individual NCAA title in the 5,000 meters, tapping into that signature closing kick, picked up major points for NAU after earlier this season setting the collegiate record in that event. And Mike Smith said anything can happen in a championship meet. What puts you in a position to handle it is knowing you're competing for something bigger than yourself. Certainly NAU doing that today. And we certainly cannot forget Arkansas. They're the defending champions and they always manage to get it done. Here is the scoring picture. And you have to realize that Sometimes people don't come through like they should, and other times people overperform. But that is sort of the form chart that we're looking at with Florida actually with a three-point lead if everything went right. Here are the current standings after five of 17 events. It is a tie between Northern Arizona and Arkansas. Oklahoma State, North Carolina about five points back. So uh, lots of running, jumping, throwing, and uh, relaying left to go before the end of the day when we crown the champion. First event on the track, always in the finals, men's mile, the NCAA meet record held by Cole Hawker, who was on the U.S. team running in Glasgow last week. And first we're looking at Colin Solomon from Northern Arizona. He anchored their DMR last night that came in 11th. They did not score points. 
He is big, certainly, to get points for their team hopes. And then Luke Hauser, the reigning champion, one of two University of Washington athletes that you have in this field. And then Parvez Khan, the SEC champion, freshman from the University of Florida, got into this final with a phenomenal closing kick to advance. That is something that has become his signature. This is one of the toughest mile fields that we have seen. And huge team implications here with Northern Arizona and Florida. Khan really introduced himself to the country the way he won the SEC mile title two weeks ago in Fayetteville. There are your competitors. There are 10 in total. Eight will score. And they will cut to the pole after they finish the second full turn. That's Adam Spencer from Wisconsin going straight to the front, getting out of the way there of Joe Wascom. You see Hauser and Wascom there in second and third. Spencer comes into this meet extremely fit and sharp, won the mile, the indoor Big Ten championships for the second straight season. He was also the fastest in qualifying, but you can never count out University of Washington at these middle distance events, the 1500 and the mile. It's been two years since the last non-Washington runner in that mile. 1500 between the indoor and outdoor season you'd have to go back two years ago to Mario Garcia Romo of Ole Miss 62 seconds for that first 400 and Dwight that's what we've seen this has shaped up in the last few years to be a very tactical race and you can tell that by how tightly bunched the group is Parvesh Khan staying out of trouble but running extra distance out there in lane two but at least he's not at the back of the pack where you normally see him for the first half of the race and that is something that i talked earlier today with will palmer about that was his message to parvej because this is his first ever ncaa indoor appearance first ever ncaa appearance outright so he wanted him to stay out of trouble and run how he's comfortable he really does not rattle easily but he just hasn't been in these types of situations before he is however the record holder, the Indian national record holder in the mile, now going out really wide. They are five and six wide as they go into that turn. So things not really picking up much. Adam Spencer of Wisconsin, the junior from uh, Melbourne, Australia, continuing to re lead until just that moment as I was saying it. Washington a little sick of the pace being so slow. It was a 66 second 400 that they threw in there. That's why you saw Luke Hauser make that big move up to the front. He was the fastest collegian this season on all tracks, all time. List number fourth overall. Now you see a big surge on the outside. That is Colin Solomon getting right up into the thick of things. Ethan Strand of UNC in threatening position as well. This is anyone's race. It's all going to be about who plays it tactically, who evades any sort of trouble, because what we've seen in a lot of these middle distance races, it's like a roller derby out there in qualifying. So you got to avoid the contact and be able to make a definitive move. There you see Spencer Salman getting caught up in it. This slower pace is playing right into the Florida freshman's hands. Parvish Khan has a wicked kick over the last 200 meters for certain as they go through in about 308. So there's a lot of run left in a lot of these athletes. They at least tuned it up to a 58 second 400 meters. And there's Khan. You can see him out in lane three trying to get in position, but Salman sort of cuts him off. And for UNC, that's Ethan Strand now right on Hauser's shoulder as they're going to come up to the bell in a moment. This is anybody's race. And all these guys have phenomenal closing kicks, too. That's the thing. They all had to run so fast to get into this field. Anyone can do it. Hauser maintains the lead with Strand trying to make a move. Parvesh Khan getting cut off by Salman. He's all the way out in lane three. He's going to have to go wide on the turn. He may have left it too late this time. It worked for him in qualifying yesterday. It worked for him winning in the SEC. And he's going to be out of it here. Hauser's going to win it followed by Spencer. And was that Wascom that came up for third? Hauser wins at 401.72. The time is immaterial. 54.27 for a last 400 meters for the senior from Woodenville, Washington. He defends his title. He successfully repeats here in Boston. 
Here is some of that traffic that you saw. Ethan Strand got cut up in it. It was Gary Martin who went down of Virginia. So unfortunate because he looked awesome coming into the final. And then here is that closing kick. All of that experience of Luke Hauser playing into his favor. Eyes stride up as he brings it home, fending off a great late charge from Adam Spencer. The University of Washington mid-distance domination continues in the men's mile. There are the official results. Note that in sixth and seventh, Northern Arizona and Florida, only three points and two points. So not really much of a change between those two teams, but the now two-time champion is downstairs with John. Thank you, Dwight. Luke, how's for the W's for Washington or for win? Uh, it seems like winning one would be hard. Two seems twice as hard. How is it you got it done? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly, certainly not easy the second time around. Still have to put in the same work week in and week out. So, you know, I knew what it took to win. And so, you know, every day I showed up to practice with that, that champion mentality, put in the work all year to get to this point. And how'd this play out for you? Because you, you were right you, there where you need to be the whole time, but that's a group of sharks. Yeah, I mean, I took, took the lead early just because I knew, I knew positioning is so important. And I was, you know, I was getting challenged every lap. Someone was coming up on my shoulder, but just had to keep fighting to hold them off. And was able, to, was, was able to just get all the way home. Yeah. Congratulations, another mile title for the guys in Washington. Good, by, good job by you, Luke Hauser. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Now that's the mile. Coming up next is the 60. And uh, well, Noah Lyles knows nothing about running in college because he decided to skip over that. But give me some advice for guys coming up in our 60. Uh, to be honest, it's all going to be about patience. Everybody thinks it's about who can run the fastest, but it's really about who can hold their nerve and make sure that they hit all their positions in the right time. And, Terrence Jones of Texas Tech is the favorite. Yeah. Um, I can get you a lane if you want. I don't think they need that smoke. All right. You and I will sit back. We'll watch Terrence Jones coming up next. Men's 60 here at the NCAA Championships. Texas Tech, boy, that's big for the Red Raiders that Jones wins this race. To be able to come out and, like, win the national champion, which is, like, what everybody's dream in college, is just a blessing. Mindset is more or less the same thing. It's just staying focused. When it comes to us coming out here and running as a team, I feel like it comes easy. The heptathlon wrapped earlier today, and we caught up with the guys on the second day. Leo Neugebauer had that lead after day one, the NCAA outdoor and collegiate record holder, holding a steady lead going into day two. And there is Leo always having a good time out there with his competitors. There's Heath Baldwin, the senior from Michigan State. Day two is a good day for him. He starts with one of his best events, the hurdles. But there you see Leo Neugebauer, not the best hurdler in the world. A little bit tight in those hips, but he would run a personal best there. 825 for 920 points, and that would keep him on all-time personal best pace. Here is Heath Baldwin. He's the Michigan State 60-meter record holder newly this year. See how quick he is, 791. And that would move him just to within 31 points of Leo Neugebauer. A good job by Heath Baldwin. Three PBs on day one, and then they would move to the pole vault. This is an event that Leo Neugebauer has got increasingly better at over the last couple of years. This is his first attempt at 16 feet, three and a quarter inches, and look at the height there. Former Catholic Trey Hardy says, I didn't know they made poles big enough to support this guy, but Leo Neugebauer, he would not only make that bar, but he would go on to clear 16 feet 11 for 960 points, and he would go into the final event 123 points up on everybody else. And here you see the last part of that 1,000 meters, five laps on this 200-meter track. Leo puts his hands up because he knows he's got the thing won. There you see the two embrace. They would finish one and two, but Neugebauer goes 246 in the 1,000. There you see him with his coach, Jim Garnum. 6,347 points, and that would be good enough even to win the bronze medal at the World Championships. So congratulations to the big man from Texas. All right, next on the track, on the infield straightaway, the NCAA meet record in the 60 meters is by Christian Coleman, who also has the world record. And there is Terrence Jones. He, Jones, he is the man of the moment for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. He'll be in the middle of the track. He is the defending champion and the co-collegiate record holder. Well, there's Kalen Walker. He's been breaking all kinds of records at the University of Iowa this season. Talked to Joey Woody, his coach, this morning. He said this kid is a world-class starter. He thinks he's going to run sub-10 outdoors in the 100 meters as well. But not many people knew about him coming out of high school. There's he, Travis, Travis Williams, the transfer from Albany, now down at Southern California. 
The SC always has somebody in the finals here at the NCAA championships. But in the prelims, Terrence Jones said he didn't like the way he executed. And we heard Noah Lyle say it's all about execution, not just about being fast. It's about executing. And Jones said, I need to execute better today if I want to win. Jones also has the NCAA lead this year at 647. He will start out of lane number four with Walker on his right. Williams on his left. There's Noah Lyles. Probably happy he's not in this particular race. A lot of tension, a lot of team implications. A little bit of a blip for Jones at the top of the set, but he's just so good through that dry face. He defends successfully. Looks like maybe Kalen Walker or Dondre Swint of Texas Tech was right up there for second or third. 654 for Jones. And it was Kalen Walker who got second for Iowa. And was it Swint for third? That would be huge for Tech if they got first and third. And it was so close, they are having a trouble separating everybody, but it was Terrence Jones successfully de defending his title from last year. Well, Terrence Jones did not like his start yesterday in the prelims. He didn't get a particularly good start today either. Both Williams and Walker on his left and right got a better start, but Jones didn't panic, and he got into his upright running position. Then he was able to make a move on Kalen Walker to his, our left, his right. But there you see Jones. He has run faster on a couple of occasions this season. But we talk about the execution. You've got to get big out of the blocks. You, you've got to be powerful before you can stand up and run fast. And there you see Noah, Noah Lyles, the fastest 100-meter guy in the world last season. Got to be exciting for these young athletes, though, to see uh, Noah Lyles in the house watching them compete. All right, John's got the champion down on the infield. I do. In fact, we're yeah, very much on the infield. We're trying to step off the track, get away with the triple jumpers. Okay, hang on. Mitchell Effing from NAU trying to get some points there for the... Folks from Flagstaff, all right, thanks for your patience there, Terrence. Uh, it appeared you needed patience in this race because you said the start wasn't good. What didn't you like about it? The reaction wasn't good. Uh, kind of, like I probably was the last one out of the blocks. Uh, didn't really execute it as good as I wanted to. Didn't really power through it, but it's always, it's always something to learn, you know. Might have been like the best results I wanted, but it's called plan. I still get my with the win. You're an experienced veteran at this thing. If this is two years ago, would you have been smart enough and patient enough to win this race after that start? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Uh, it took it took a lot for me. It took a lot for me to get here. So being able to lose all that experience and run the way I run now, fair, yeah. But, but two years ago, me could not have done this. Congratulations, back-to-back -back champ, Terrence Thank Jones. You. Ten points for him. Nineteen for the Red Raiders, Dwight. That's Thank right, you. John. They had three finalists. We uh, failed to mention that. They got 19 points out of that 60. Look at how close by a couple thousandths of a second fit, separated third and fourth. So a great start for the Red Raiders towards their hopes for a team title. Terrence Jones, you'll expect to see him in Paris this summer representing the Bahamas. When we come back, back onto the Oval and the 400. So let's look at the men's updated sta standings after that outstanding run for Texas Tech in the 60 meters. Arkansas with a 14 and a half point lead over Tech that now has 22 and a half. Northern Arizona just a point and a half back in third and Washington also lurking in fourth place with seven events remaining. The next one on the track, first of two sections of the men's 400 meter finals. Four runners in each of these sections. You can win and score points from either race. Michael Norman with the meet record and Christopher Morales Williams who is in this section has the collegiate best and the world best. There he is, the sophomore from Georgia, who ran that world best in Fayetteville at the SEC meet two weeks ago, but because of the wrong blocks, he will not get credit for a world record, but he still ran the time. Well, I coach Carroll at, at the University of Georgia. I, I said, you know, what's he gonna do and what's, what's the plan today? And she said, run the race the same as he did at the SEC meet. He got to the 200 meter mark a little bit easier at the SEC meet than he did yesterday. Same time, but she wants to see a cleaner race out of him. And there's Javon Powell from Florida. And Coach Holloway said, this guy steps up, just does what he needs to do. I think, I think this is the faster heat, Dwight. Yeah. 
Morales Williams was in lane five in Fayetteville, but he set that record. He's running pretty much blind here with no one to key off of. He'll stay in these lanes until they get through this second curve and then break for the pole, which is so important to get it and get it cleanly. Morales is going for it, but so is Ahmad Robinson, but Morales gets it with no break in stride. 20.99, the first 200. That's the first sub-21 we've seen here or in Arkansas, but Ahmad Robinson of Texas A&M right there behind him, and the turnover is not there for Morales Williams like it was in Fayetteville. Here comes Ahmad Robinson. The Aggie is digging deep. Morales Williams is going to win the heat and establish the time to beat at 44-66. An outstanding run for the sophomore. That more than proves what he did two weeks ago was completely legit. This is a much slower track for 400-meter runners, corrected to 44-67. So that is what they will be shooting for in the second section. Ahmad Robinson with a gutty performance in second for the Aggies. Well, here you see them all break, and I expected Javon Powell after that first 150 meters for him to be in a little better position for the break, but Chris Morales-Williams, he gets there first, and there was no doubt about it. He wanted the pull, he got it, and he pushed all the way to the end, and he needs to work on his arms, but he still continues to get down the track. I thought Ahmad Robinson might come up on the outside, but look at Morales continuing to get through the line. This is like all, this is the all out effort that you need to have in the 400 meters. He'll get those arms figured out, but an outstanding run from the first heat. And remember Dwight, last year, the 400 meters was won from the first heat as well. Elijah Godwin. So Christopher Morales Williams, only he and Michael Johnson have run 44-66 or faster indoors. Pretty elite company for this young Canadian sophomore at the University of Georgia. 44.67, the time that everybody will be shooting for in section number two. Javon Powell down there in third for Florida. They were hoping for more. Time now for section two of the 400. These four gentlemen know what time they are shooting for. 44.67 run by Christopher Morales Williams. There is William Jones. He gets the number or the lane five draw from Southern Cal. Well, Coach Quincy Watts said this kid has a big engine and he is a real closer. He said he wants, he wants him to run this 400 meters as if he's just racing the clock, not the other guys in his race. He thinks he can get to the 200 meter first and then he just needs to give it everything he's got in the last 200 meters. There's Judson Link in the fourth from Virginia Tech. We saw two 400 meters from him yesterday. He ran the, four by, he ran the 400 meter leg on the distance medley relay for Virginia Tech and they finished in 10th position, but he, uh, maybe feeling a little bit from two 400 meter runs yesterday. So the sophomore from USC will be in lane number five. Ran just off his lifetime best in qualifying yesterday. And Lincoln the fourth out in lane six. Jamar Uter of Texas Tech down there in lane three, trying to score points for the Red Raiders. Brian Heron of Texas, then Jones, then Lincoln. Well, William Jones looked like he stumbled out of the blocks there just a little bit. Did not look comfortable at all, and his idea to get to the break first, he may not get there. And it goes to the Red Raider, Shamar Uter. That's great for them if he can pull down the time. Two section one runners were under 45 seconds. Can any of these guys join them? Judson Lincoln trying to go wide. Coming off the curve, chased by Jones, but it's gonna be Judson Lincoln the fourth who wins the heat. But it's 45-53, well off of what Christopher Morales Williams and Ahmad Robinson ran from section one. So the Georgia sophomore will be the NCAA 400 meter champion. In fact, that first section may have scored the top four times. We'll have to check and see how they combine the times from the two sections. But there's no doubt about the fact. Well, these guys in section two had their work cut out for them running 44-66. And that, that knowing you have to 67, knowing you have to run that time can take you out of your game plan. 
Judson Lincoln did come on strong. William Jones was looking for space at the end there as well. But nobody really ran fast enough in the first 200 meters to give themselves a chance to break into the 44 seconds. That's an outstanding run by the Hokie there on the outside. He sees the time and he's disappointed. Well, it was just four hundredths of a second off his lifetime best, but yes, it was a huge mountain to climb. There you see that Judson Lincoln's performance did get him up to third place, but it was Christopher Morales Williams who follows up on a world best performance two weeks ago with an outstanding performance here at the NCAA Championships that gets him the 400 meter crown, and he's with John. Thank you, Dwight. So we've had a back-to-back -back mile champ. We had a back-to-back -back 60 champ. We have a back-to-back -back 400 champ. If we count Elijah Godwin and now Christopher Morales Williams, it's back-to-back -back for the Bulldogs. Tell me about, uh, we were discussing Elijah and how important he's been to you. Uh, tell the folks what, he, what he's meant to your career. Yeah, Elijah, when I came in last year, I mean, he was one of the first people I, I actually spoke to coming in January. Didn't know much people. And I mean, he just kind of showed me around, showed me everything. He was my training partner in practice. And so countless times, you know, I'd be losing to him at practice, trying to beat this guy, trying to beat this guy. But at the end of the day, it was always a good rivalry him and I had to push each other at practice. He got out fast, I finished strong. And so all of that, just being with him, I mean, he, he inspired me to do this, definitely. And what did he text you this morning? He uh, texted me to go make history. Uh, you made history by winning. How'd you do it? I uh, just thought about coming out, winning the 200, just like I did at SECs. And I just tried to do the same thing. I didn't want to change anything up. Just run the same way, so I kind of won the break, and then from there I just knew I had to finish strong, and then I just held it all the way to the end. Won the break, uh, won the race. Congratulations. Thank He's a you. damn good dog, Dwight. Thank you. All right, John, two great performances under 45 seconds here on a track that's not quite as fast as the Fayetteville or Texas A&M tracks. When we come back, we'll go back to the infield straight away. It's the men's 60-meter hurdles next. Look at the updated standings. Arkansas now with a 12, no, 11 and a half point lead over Texas Tech. Northern Arizona right there in third. Washington and Florida. There's still a lot of potential points out there for all of those teams. And I tease the hurdles, but first we're going to have the 800 meters final. Michael Cerrone with the NCAA meet record. Yusuf Bizamano, who did not make this final, had the best time in the country amongst collegians this year. There is Abdullah. Uh, Hassan of Wisconsin, the junior from Canada, who is the Big Ten Outdoor 800 champion. Bizamana was also the defending champ in this event, so we'll have a new champion this oh, year. Yes. Abdali Hassan represented Canada at the World Championships last August in the 800 Stella. meters. Couple guys who looked really good in qualifying as well. Rivaldo Marshall of Iowa. He was the top qualifier from the semifinals. Nick Plant from Virginia Tech had a personal best. I thought though, Sean Dolan had the smoothest, most relaxed qualifying round of any of the 800 rounds. Five runners on the inside section, three on the outside. They'll stay in those groups through the first two turns and then break for the pole on the finishing straight. As you mentioned, Marshall, Rivaldo Marshall of Iowa with a top time in qualifying yesterday. Two Iowa State Cyclones in this final, Darius Kipiego and Finley McClear, 25 seconds, first 200. And in talking with the Cyclones head coach, Jeremy Sudbury, he said it's great to have one another, have both in this field, but they will run very individualized race plans. Not going to run the same way, have very different directions in how to do this. Therese Roden from Clemson, always a contender in this field. He's one who likes to go aggressively and run from the front. 52 second first 400, so not blazing, but not trotting either. Sean Dolan looking really comfortable to hang on the shoulder of Therese Roden, Roden as well. As he goes up to the front, takes to the lead. Dolan, the six-time Big East 800-meter champion and a three-time NCAA finalist. This guy knows how to win big races. But Rivaldo Marshall is right there. There is Hassan at the bell. Dolan still in control in the front with Roden challenging on his shoulder, but Dolan's not going to give it to him. He's going to make him run wide in the turn if he could, but no, Marshall had too much going into that turn. Who's responding? It doesn't look like anybody. 
except Finley McClear on the inside, but he has no path. Rivaldo Marshall is going to win it. And Dolan is going to hang on for second with McClear third on the inside. If he had had a little bit of room a la Rich Kana from back in the day, he could have snuck by on the rail and maybe done something. But Rivaldo Marshall hangs in there and pulls off the win. In his NCAA championship debut, puts on a closing clinic with that surge he threw down on the back stretch to get that distance gap over Dolan that he needed to secure the victory. And then he is all alone coming to the finish line. Gained great confidence coming off that phenomenal qualifying heat. Look at how relaxed he is. Oh, yeah. Embrace the victory. Soak it all in. Congratulations, Rivaldo Marshall and the Iowa Hawkeyes. First time an Iowa Hawkeye has won this event at the NCAA Indoor Championships. Rivaldo Marshall winning it with 146.96. Sean Dolan, who helped make the race, ends up second. And Finley McClear, had he had a clear path on the inside, that race may have ended differently. All right, this time the next event on the track will be on the infield. The men's 60-meter hurdles when we come back to the track at New Balance in Boston. All right, let's get you caught up on a little bit of field event action. First, the men's long jump from yesterday. This is Wayne Pinnock, the junior at Arkansas, followed fellow Jamaican Kerry McLeod over from Tennessee. All four of his fair jumps over 27 feet, including that one, which tied the Jamaican indoor national record and has the best jump in the world this year. 27 six and three quarters for Pinnock, and more importantly, 10 points for Arkansas. Then we move over to the men's high jump, which happened today. And it's more Arkansas. The Romaine Beckford, the senior, on his third attempt with a bar at six, at seven five and a quarter. He's also from Jamaica, transferred from South Florida, won the SEC meet, and he just cruises on that third attempt at seven five and a quarter. A big power jumper, great position over the bar. He defends his championship from last year successfully. That seven five and a quarter clearance, no one else able to match him at that height. 10 big points for the Hogs. So the jumpers really came through for Coach Bucknum. And that is why after 12 events, Arkansas has that bulge. 37 to 25 and a half then. Northern Arizona, Washington, and Iowa. All right, now we're ready for the 60 meter hurdles. There's the meet record held by Grant Holloway, the world champion and the world indoor record holder. And there are three tied for the yearly lead amongst collegians. This is Johnny Brackens who also long jumped yesterday for Southern Cal. He'll be in lane number four. Well, he got stuck in the middle of that long jump and had to come over here and run the hurdles. He didn't get to take his last few jumps, so he was a little flustered, Joanna Hayes. His, his coach said, but he managed to get through. Here he is in the finals. That's Caleb Dean from Texas Tech. He already got sixth place in the 60-meter dash today. Let's see what he can score here in the hurdles. A couple of a and Aggies up on the right side of your screen in lane two and three, Connor Schulman and Jaqualin Scott. <laughs> Dean and Brackens with great starts. They are stride for stride, but Dean now with a little bit of a crack, but here comes Brackens. I'm not sure who leaned it out first. I'm giving it to Dean. And if they do that, 10 more points for the Red Raiders. Not only did they get most of their people through yesterday, he got it. They're also performing today. They got 19 points from their three athletes in the 60-meter final, and now Kayla Dean comes back and takes the hurdle title and 10 points for the Red Raiders. Well, Caleb Dean had a little trouble with the schedule yesterday because he usually runs the hurdles first and then he goes to the 60. But look at him out lean Johnny Brackens there. Caleb Dean smashed the fourth hurdle. Johnny Brackens hit the last hurdle and that's what let Caleb Dean get to the line. But a good start, real solid. There you see Caleb Dean, seven strider to the first hurdle. Johnny Brackens is a very clean hurdler, but he hit hurdles along the way. But look at Caleb Dean come off that last hurdle. He was the one who was square. Wow, Johnny Brackens was just lucky to be standing after that fifth hurdle. But good running by the Texas Tech Red Raider, and he came through with big points. First title for Tech in the hurdles indoors. And there are the official results. Look at that. One-tenth of a second, one-one-hundredth of a second, I should say, over Brackens. And 
to Quallen Scott getting third and the new champion is downstairs with John. I do have the champ. I want to know are we more excited about the win or are we more excited about the 10 points for the Red Raiders. I'm excited about both man. <laughs> I've been praying for this day for a long time. After the 400 meter hurdles I actually broke my foot warming up for the finals. So just from that day on I just prayed about it and I, I grind I worked my butt off and it, it happened. I can't thank God enough. Can't thank my supporters, my family and everything like that. Shout out to Kenny. I love you so much. Uh, shout out to my parents, my people back home 301. Shout out to y'all. My coaches. Thank y'all for everything. What's the hardest part of coming back from that? You see it? I wrote it. I, man I manifested it. You know, speak stuff into the existence and it's going to come true. Hardest part of coming back from that broken foot, where were low points that you had to really push and fight through? Man, I was in a, a, a boot all summer. I was in a boot for five months. Uh, I didn't start competing until, I mean, I didn't start training until late October. So I just had to, you know, literally do pool workouts, do the Ultra G. I just had to fight through it because I knew, I knew I had a place uh, uh, in the NCAA. And I, I, I'm i literally speechless. I don't know what to say. I just can't thank God enough for this this title. You don't have to say anything. We can tell. Good job by you. First, uh, first off that last hurdle and a good lean. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'll take care. Dwight. All right, John. Huge, huge points for Texas Tech from Caleb Dean, scoring in the 60 and the 60 hurdles. When we come back, talk about team applications. Arkansas, Texas Tech, and Florida all have finalists in the 200 meters. All right, let's update the standings after that great performance in the 60-meter hurdles by Caleb Dean. Arkansas now with just a point-and-a-half lead over Texas Tech. Northern Arizona now fading back to third by more than 10 points, and then a huge glut between third place and seventh place. But this is a huge event for Florida, Arkansas, and Texas Tech. Two sections of the 200 meters, just like the 400 meters. You can win from either section, score points from either section. The NCAA meet record set last year by Elijah, uh, uh, six years ago by Elijah Hall and Robert Gregory of Florida. The huge hope for the Gators here. He's got that great draw in lane six in section one. I well, talk today's coach Mike Holloway. I said, what makes him such a good runner? He says he's so competitive, whether it's practice or competition. He is just, he just loves to compete. There we see checking out Trey Orr, the, the new school record holder from Penn State. He lowered that school record in the qualifying rounds yesterday. Every time this kid runs, he breaks a school record. But he's the kind of guy who rises up to the level of the competition. We'll see if he can rise up to the level of Robert Gregory's competition just to his outside. Robert Gregory has the number three time in the country amongst collegians at this point. He's got a great lane draw, as does his teammate. Wanye McCoy, who's in section number two, he's in lane number five. All the way in lanes, as fast as you can. Robert Gregory's goal, not see his competitors until after the finish line. Very even through the first 100 meters. Treor making a move in lane five as they get ready to come off that turn. Robert Gregory lifting, but he cannot catch Treor. It's Shechnik Treor of Penn State and the Ivory Coast winning it in 2030. And that is a lifetime best for the senior from Penn State. 2037 for Robert Gregory in second position. Well, like I said, every time he runs a race, he breaks the school record. There you see him second from the left. Look at the arm action. Great front side mechanics as he comes off the bend. He just continues to lift. This is an area where you where you think Robert Gregory is going to make a move. He's got so much strength. But look at the energy Treyor had there. He continued to swing his arms. Nice dip at the line as well. But a new school record for that young man. There are the official results and the time to beat. Chekna Treor, the senior from Penn State, drops a 20-30. Robert Gregory from Florida, a very fine performance in 20-37. We'll have to see what happens in section two. Okay, ready now for section two of the 200 meters. And in this section, we see the 60-meter champion doubling back in the 200. This is Texas Tech's Terrence Jones, the collegiate leader in the 200. 
Well, before coming into these championships, he'd only been over 200 meters in races two times before. And so his third was in the semifinal yesterday. This will be his fourth. He says he's still trying to figure out the 200 meter indoors, the ups and the downs and, and the little nuances of indoor track. And there you see Wanye McCoy. He was the 200 meter champ at the SEC championships two weeks ago. Saw his teammate Robert Gregory go. But there are three guys from this heat who have all-time personal best faster than Chekna Treor ran in the first heat. This is going to be a this is going to be a quick heat. McCoy was fourth in the 60-meter dash just by thousandths of a second, so he certainly has the speed. And with a 2029 lifetime best, he certainly has the speed in the 200 meters as well. Down in lane four, Tarsus Oregon of Alabama on paper has the fastest lifetime best at 2017. Twenty thirty is the time to beat for the title. This lane draws a real advantage for Wanye McCoy because he gets to have Terrence Jones as the rabbit, but Jones is out very quickly. A little bit of a gap there. Here comes Tarsus Oregon trying to make up the stagger on Wanye McCoy, but McCoy is also strong. Coming off the turn. Oh, something happened with Wanye McCoy, and that's a disaster for Florida. Jones wins the heat and will win the title 2024. The double champion now corrected to 2023 wins the 60 and the 200. And the Red Raiders are rolling. Well, if this is his fourth 200 all time, this is absolutely amazing. This guy just steps onto the track and you can see he got off to a great start. He really pushed that first 100 meters. And here you see them coming off the turn and Wanya McCoy, nothing really blew up on him. You could just tell something happened. So he had to, he had to, he had to let it go. But look at the power on the outside. McCoy, Terrence Jones just running away with it. He was going to come off the turn in first place. Tarsus Zora got not far behind. But what an NCAA championships for Terrence Jones and the Red Raiders. The first doubler since Elijah Hall for the Houston Cougars back in 2018. And another 10 points for the Red Raiders. Treoris 20-30 time from section one holds up for second place as Robert Gregory holds up for third. So Florida, a disaster for Wanye McCoy. He does finish the race and does get that one point for eighth place. But the champion, again, is with John. Yeah, thank you, Dwight. Uh, Terrence and I are just running out of things to talk about. I said, we were talking about, he's like, well, my girlfriend's not here. She's probably watching. I feel like we should probably talk more about the, the one lapper when you come through here. Back-to-back uh, -back champions, what went right in this race? Uh, I feel like what went right was everything, to be honest. Right from the start, I got out really aggressive. I drove it out, I found out and I finished hard. So I think for me, that's probably like one of the best 200s I've run in though. Congratulations. You know, your team started in second place when you crossed the line, now you're in first place. It's a good feeling. There you go, Texas Tech on top right now, Dwight. Indeed, John, they do vault themselves into the lead and we will give you those numbers when we come back. Speaking of coming back, the next event on the track, the men's 3,000 meters. That will also have team implications. Back at the track at New Balance here in Boston. Well, we have had a lead change now after 14 events. Texas Tech on the strength of that double by Terrence Jones now vaults into the lead by six and a half points over Arkansas with Florida now up into third by themselves with 26. Next event on the track as advertised, the men's 3,000 meters. There's the meet record by Lowy LaLang from the University of Arizona, now 11 years ago. And Parker Wolf, who is in this race, has the best time in the country this year, along with Kai Robinson of Stanford. But there's Nico Young coming back from his great 5,000 meter victory last night. 
What a spectacular season it has been. Broke that collegiate record in the 5,000 back in January, seated fourth in this race. But what he said coming in was it's most important for the team implications. And he has two teammates alongside him. So that allows NAU to create some of that dynamic that has allowed them such great cross-country success to have all three guys represented. And then Kai Robinson in here, who was third in the 5,000 last night and the reigning NCAA outdoor champion in both the five and the 10. Parker Wolf ran an absolutely spectacular 5K last night to finish runner up to Nico Young. Stand up. Stand up. 16 athletes in the field, just like in every other individual event, top 16 in the country qualifying to come here to Boston for the NCAA championships. Only the best 12 teams, relay teams, make it into the meet. And like in the mile in the 800, they will stay in those sections for two full turns and then break for the pole on the finishing straight. Also worth noting, look who's back off that mile victory. Luke Hauser from the University of Washington. First back-to-back -back mile champ since Josh Kerr in 2017 and 2018. And he's going to get in there and mix things up in the 3K as well. This is a race that could be pretty spicy. You have guys who have run other races. We talked about guys in the five, guys in the mile. I think guys who are also coming in fresh. This is a must-do-well event for uh, NAU. They've got three athletes in here. They need to score points here if they want to get on the podium. Oklahoma State has two, and Villanova has two as well when you talk about those team implications. And the Northern Arizona guys, all three of them, have the opportunity to be in scoring position. They have Nico Young, they have Aaron Las Harris, and Theo Quax in that conversation. I'm so glad that you brought up Theo Quax. I thought you might be. It's not exactly a common name. Theo Quax is the son of the late Dick Quax, an outstanding runner, Olympic silver medalist in the 5,000 meters from New Zealand. He, set, he got that medal of running behind Lassie Viren in Montreal in 1976. So Theo Quax from NAU in this race. And I mentioned two Oklahoma State miscounted. It's actually three because you cannot miss America's brightest orange up in front right now. All right, this uh, pace pretty well established. They're stringing things out. Let's step aside for a moment and hand it over to Dan for the shot put. Well, the men's shot put, men's and women's shot put took place in another, build, in another part of this building, a beautiful building. But this is Tariq Robinson O'Hagan in front of their own shot put crowd. The sophomore from Old Miss, he was fifth in the weight throw just the other night. And on the first round, he would really send one out there. 67-6, he was the SEC indoor champ this season as well. And big points needed by the Arkansas Razorback. Roger Stona said, I'm gonna get you some. He's from, he's from Jamaica. He was third at the SEC indoor championship. But there's a big throw by him in the fourth round. He would go 67 two and a quarter, and he would finish in second place. But this young man right here, Tariq Robinson O'Hagan, did not lose the lead throughout the entire competition. This is his thick sixth and final attempt. Boom, and just as an encore, he would go 69 feet, three quarters of an inch, and improve his lead and walk away with an NCAA title. Important eight points for the Razorbacks from Roja Stona in second place. Back to the 3,000 meters, and they just, when they come up to the start finish line, they will have nine laps remaining. The most recent 400 meter split 61.7. They're at 240 through the first 1,000 meters, and look who is up front for Oklahoma State. That's Ryan Shoppy, who anchored the distance medley relay to victory on Friday night with Nico Young on his, sh his shoulder. Cowboys with three in the top seven right now out of 16 runners, including first and third. They went from a 61.7 to a 62 flat 400, so pretty consistent on those back-to-back -back 400 meters. The first 400 went out sort of slow, almost 67 seconds, but they definitely kept it honest since then. There's Parker Wolf, has moved into the fourth place for the Tar Heels. Oklahoma State well establishing those team tactics, getting three up there in the thick of it, especially up front where you have Shoppy and Masao.
Massal ran the leadoff leg on that distance medley relay, so he set things up for Ryan Shoppy on the close. Nico Young running very comfortably behind Shoppy, and in talking with Oklahoma State head coach Dave Smith, he said that Shoppy is so hungry to score in an NCAA individual event obviously has been part of their distance medley success they went back to back on those dmr titles but individually aiming to score some points they are now on a 754 pace that last one 62.5 so through 1600 meters at 413 we start to expect things to shake up just a little bit as they come through with six laps to go and in the top six or seven we see Anas Asai of South Carolina, who stepped off the track yesterday in qualifying with a lap to go. We have not heard anything about what may have happened to him, but we see him out there in this field and certainly up in the mix. There he is, number seven on his hip. He's right in the mix of this 3,000 meters. Also, did not qualify for the mile yesterday, stepped off the track. Apologies, Dwight, but Haptum Samuel, one to, when, one to watch. You can see that distinct teal color, turquoise of New Mexico. He was fourth in the 5,000 last night, and the NCAA cross-country runner-up, best finish by a freshman since Edward Cheserek back in 2013. He is moving very well as they're at 62.6 on that last 400 through 2,000 meters. To 515 through 2,000 meters. Four laps remaining now. Shoppy continuing to pace Nico Young very much the same as he did in the DMR. He stayed in front on that final anchor leg and never gave up the lead. In talking with head coach Mike Smith at NAU, he said that one area where Nico has really grown is knowing which moves within a race to respond to. Saw a great response right there. He said he's very selective now in when he chooses to make a bold move in a race. Certainly the kick is what separates him in these types of situations. Oklahoma State right there as well, 61.4, last 400. Brian Massau is the only one sticking with Nico Young from the Cowboys. Shoppy has been dropped, and now a gap develops from, being, from Nico Young. Parker Wolf now moving up on Massau's shoulder, trying to give chase to Nico Young. Now two laps remaining, 400 meters for the Lumberjack, who won the 5,000 meters last night. This is a guy who had always thrown down some great times in meets coming into the national championships, but did not have an individual title until last night, and now he's looking to double. 28 seconds on that most recent 200 meters. He is going for it, but Parker Wolf is still within striking distance. At the bell, he'll have two meters, 200 meters to go. He's looking at trying to break Lawi LaLang's meet record 745-94. Nico Young, Parker Wolf about 10 meters back. It's just too much real estate to make up. It's gonna be Nico Young completing the double, 5,000 meters Friday night, 3,000 meters tonight. And he wins it with a meet record, 741 flat. Now 741-01. But what's happening behind him? How many Lumberjacks were in scoring position after him to make a difference? That's 10 points out of Nico. We'll have to see who the top eight are. But dominating performance. He took off with about three and a half laps to go. And it was all Nico Young from then through the finish. That record-setting performance set up with a 29-second closing 200 meters, 401 for that last mile. And his coach said he is such a special athlete. He is made for championship racing and moments like it, this. Nico Young proving it right here, a double champion sweeping the 5,000 and the 3,000 as he proudly represents NAU. Single-handedly, 20 points for the team from Nico Young. Well, 10 points is all they will get as they finish 9th and 14th with their other two runners, but Nico Young with a new NCAA meet record. Parker Wolf was also under the old meet record in second place, and Alex Meyer of Oklahoma State ended up getting third, and Nico, the double champion, is downstairs with John.
Thank you, Dwight. Yeah, five and three. I said hey, you finally break through, and now you're just showing off with meet records. Um, any part of that was a difficult part of that race. Where was it? Um, I think it was the first, I mean, the first 10 laps. Um, as I was debating whether or not to, to go, I was, in, I was just like, I didn't know when I was going to go, but it naturally just started to happen with 600 left. So probably approaching that was the hardest part. That's the, just that decision. Yeah. Just give me a, a feel for how you are different with two national titles compared to what you were coming in with none. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think I'm just at a point where, like, I, I said this in December, like, my fitness is lining up well with my ability to access it uh, mechanically as well as the training that I've been doing. So I've just, it's just another progression, like, along the way, especially after having a rough year last year. Definitely coming at this a lot less stressed. <laughs> Double national so. champ. We're headed outdoors, man. Yeah. We'll see you then. Absolutely. Thank Very you. Very good. Thank you, Dwight. Upstairs. All right, John. Well, Nico Young joins his former teammate, Abdi Noor, as a double champion at this meeting. He did that two years ago. So some dominance by NAU. We come back. It's the 4 by 4 Field events to be contested here in Boston. It's the men's triple jump. Well, this is Russell Robinson, the senior from Miami. And look at the start of this run. He's clear out there into lane one. Takes a couple of skip steps and then he heads down the runway. He was second at the ACC Indoor Championships, eighth at the NCAA Indoors last year, second outdoors at the NCAA Championships. And on his first attempt, he would send one way out there. And he would come up out of the sand and he would go 55 feet even. This would be a personal best for him and nobody would be able to catch him. There you see him celebrating with head coach at Miami, Amy Deem. But congratulations to Russell Robinson from the University of Miami. He wins it by just an inch and a quarter over Luke Brown. So now the updated standings as we get ready for the final event. Texas Tech has a five and a half point lead over Arkansas. Florida now far out of it from a standpoint of winning, but certainly possible to get on the podium. And both Texas Tech and Arkansas have teams in this four by four. NCAA meet record held by USC. Back in the Rye Benjamin Michael Norman days in Arizona State with the best time in the country this year. But just moments ago in section two of this 4x400, watch this crazy finish. It's Alabama, Texas AM, and Tech. Texas Tech with a little stumble there by their third runner, Josh Bohr. And they ran in a very tight group all the way through the final leg. And watch this crazy close finish. Well, that was Brian Heron from the University of Texas who ran from the outside, came from way back, and got them the heat win. They won the heat by a hundredth, and then two hundredths back was Texas Tech. So the time to beat, 3.03 and change. We'll get that for you. 3.03.34 as we go to section three. This is really the seeded section. Arkansas is in this along with Arizona State, Florida, and Southern California. There's their lineup. And boy, is this a crazy important race for Arkansas. There's Florida's quartet. Texas Tech can afford to be about three or four places behind Arkansas when all the dust settles and still win the title. Where's the fastest team in the country right there, my neck of the woods, Arizona State University. Justin Robinson will lead off for the Sun Devils. We're just hearing that the University of Texas was DQ'd on that second section. They were the winner of the section, so Texas Tech would move up to second place overall going into this final section. So all these teams, all four of these teams would need to run faster than Texas Tech and Arkansas would have to win in order to take the title. From the inside, it is University of Southern California, Arkansas, Arizona State, Florida. The leadoff runner for USC, Justin Brown. For Arkansas, Connor Washington. For Arizona State, Justin Robinson. And for Florida, Javon Powell. Arizona State and Florida, the only two teams that dip under 303 this season, and that's Something you see on a, on a regular basis. It's kind of surprised Florida hasn't run a little bit faster this season. But a good run by Justin Robinson. You know he's going to get out aggressive and try to get the Sun Devils a lead. And Florida does not have the services of Wanye McCoy, who 
got injured in that 200 meters. He smartly finished the race and scored points for the Gators. Florida will pass first, but a better pass by Arizona State keeps them in the lead. Well, good run by Javon Powell to start this thing. The top two runners for Florida go in the number one and number two positions. This is Robert Gregory, the 200-meter specialist there running for the Florida Gators. Caleb Simpson, the senior running for the Sun Devils. Lance Lang for Arkansas, and they're well back. They need to be winning this section if they have any chance. That's Johnny Blockberger for the Trojans. Well, keep an eye on Lance Lang in the back there. He's run some incredible four by four legs for the Arkansas Razorbacks. He's trying to make a move to get them up there. Florida challenging, but Arizona State hanging in there in first place. Coming up for the second exchange, Arkansas going wide. It's still the Sun Devils in front. This is Jaden Davis for Arizona State. Then for Florida, Genoa McKeever. For the Trojans, Jacob Andrews, a freshman. And for Arkansas, T.J. Tomljanovic. I can't stress how important it is for Arkansas. They must win this section. And all these teams must be under the time that Texas Tech ran in section two. Coming up for the final exchange, it's still Arizona State, followed by Florida, USC, and Arkansas. For the Sun Devils, Gamali Felix on anchor. For Florida, Raheem Hales. For USC, William Jones. And for Arkansas, Stephen McElroy. Well, look at the way the the Florida Gator there, Raheem Hales, is holding that baton. This is something that Team USA does at the next level, World Championships and Olympic Games, and it protects that baton from getting hit by other people. It's not something a lot of teams do, but we saw some baton, we saw some baton flubs at the World Championships, and that's just something to take note of. All the third legs were under 46 seconds. Florida with a final push to try to win it, but Arizona State holds them off. They were the number one team in the country coming in, and they held on 302-31. That's actually a season best for the Sun, the Sun Devils. But Texas Tech knows they can do the math. They're fourth overall in the 4 by 400 and Arkansas did not win that heat. So Texas Tech, the Red Raiders, who have come into this meet so many times, ranked number one in the country and failed to deliver finally do so in an amazing style. Well, they run 303-37. Texas Tech did there. You see, led by Caleb Dean, he led them off. 304-77 for the Arkansas Razorbacks. And that math is, that math is really easy. But you see the celebration begin for the Red Raiders. The West Kinley led Red Raiders for their first indoor championship. And that man did amazing work. He got sixth in the 60, he won the hurdles, and led off their 4x400 relay, okay. who ended up finishing fourth overall. Here are the final results combining the sections together. Arizona State, the overall winner, Florida second, AM third, and Texas Tech fourth. They could have finished three or four places behind Arkansas, but Arkansas finishes eighth. One point for the Razorbacks, five points for Tech. And we will celebrate with the champions, first time for Texas Tech when we come back to the track at New Balance here in Boston. The track at New Balance, getting ready for the celebration by the Texas Red Raiders. And boy, they got it done today with mostly sprinters. Terrence Jones doubling in the 60 and the 200. He scored 19 points in that 60. Caleb Dean, Dean winning the hurdles, getting points in the, in the uh, flat. And now it's time to celebrate. We go down to John Anderson. Thank you, Dwight Stones. We are so happy to be here in Boston, so happy to have completed the men's championship so far. Uh, a wonderful first time uh, meet that we've held here at the track at New Balance. I am here with the man who chairs the NCAA's track and field committee, Blake Bolden. He has a trophy that belongs neither to him nor to me. 
on behalf of the NCAA Track and Field and Cross Country Committee, I want to congratulate Coach Wes Kitley and the Texas Tech Red Raiders on a national championship. Thank you so much. <laughs> Coach, I noticed that tra that that trophy is like the same size and maybe the same weight as all the other colored ones. What's it like to hold that one up? Well, first of all, all glory to God for giving me the opportunity to be the, the head coach here. Uh, what a day. I mean, <laughs> we came roaring today, and uh, that trophy means everything to Lubbock, Texas, and to our Red Raider Nation, I can tell you. Yeah, you had to go 2,035 miles away from home to claim that thing. It's been a while. You had an outdoor one. How important was it to win this for the program? Well, it's, it's just big. You know, we wanted to bring this home. We've had this goal all year long. This group uh, is a veteran group, and, uh, you know, they know how to win, and just so thankful. We were wanting to get that 50 points, and we got it. Yep. I, I know it takes a team, but uh, Terrence doubles, and then Caleb Dean, I think he ran in all the events. Uh, talk about those two guys, if you would. They're, they're warriors. I mean, those guys are just so special to our program, and they're our culture builders, and uh, they've been doing this for a long time, and they've just led this group. And just the quality and the character of these kids to come through and persevere because they've been close before. No, we have. We've been so close so many times, and uh, this is just a really special thing for this group to come back and to stay together and to work together like they have. And like I say, we're, we're bringing this thing home to Lubbock, Texas, and we're very, very proud. you got the Buddy Highland statue, and now you got a first-place trophy from the NCAA Indoor Championship. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you so much. Appreciate there, you. There you go, Dwight. Happy group of Red Raiders for sure right here, finally for them. All right, John. Well, they certainly have waited long enough for this moment. Come here so many times, so close, but they put it together today, no question. So we move away from the men, and now we get ready for the women. And on the women's side, Arkansas, again, is the defending champion, like they were on the men's side. They just weren't able to bring it together. But the women of Arkansas have so many people in the 400 and 200, they can almost win the meet just by scoring in those two events. They almost look like the Texas Red Raiders on, on the men's side where they really need to get it done in the sprints, but they have so much strength. They came with a four of the eight fastest times in the 200 meters, and then they got three through to the finals in the 400 meters, and Coach Chris Johnson's message to those young ladies were, we gotta go one, two, three. If we're gonna win this national championship, we gotta go one, two, three in the 400 meters. So look at Arkansas to really load up in the middle. But they aren't the only team here with the potential. There are other teams that have put people in the finals that if they, everything goes right and things don't go right for Arkansas, which can happen, who are those people? Well, Florida among them in very strong position. Plenty of point scoring opportunities with Parker Valby, who we saw already in this championship, win her third NCAA title coming off of that NCAA outdoor title in the 5K and NCAA cross country championship. And now she breaks her own collegiate record in the 5,000 to get things rolling for the Florida Gators. She's expected to be back on the track in the 3,000 alongside her teammate, Flomena Askel, who will also be in the mile. And you know the Florida Gators, plenty of sprinters, hurdlers, field events as well. Florida with a balanced attack for sure. We saw it on the men's side where they did very well, and a couple of other things went right for them on the men's side. They could have really made that 4 by 400 relay. Very, very interesting. A year ago, the Razorback women captured their third NCAA indoor title in four years. SEC Indoor Track and Field Championship in Arkansas Razorbacks. And last month, the Hogs showed no signs of slowing down, conquering the SEC again in style. Today, they have a chance to defend their national crown in Boston as the nation's best look to lay their own claim to the title of national champion. Florida and Texas will both be in hot pursuit. What school's name will be engraved on the trophy? The culmination of the indoor season starts right now. So it's like this here in Boston. City founded in 1630. They had the Tea Party in 1773. It's old baby Ruth to the Yankees in 1920. Tom Brady, greatest league American, comes to town, wins six Super Bowls, and now a track meet today. 
That's your history lesson, people. Quiz will be on Monday. It's the Natty at the track at New Balance, the NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championships for 2024. It's going to be wicked good stuff from the hub. 41st women's edition of the meet. Congratulations to the Texas Tech men who won earlier in the day. And now it is time for the women's competition, which will be highlighted by the defending champion, Arkansas Razorbacks, who will be powered instead of a distance program or pole boulders. This time, they are quarter mile, quarter mile or heavy. In fact, if it takes four quarters to make a hole, they're like a team and a half. I'm John Anderson, and calling all of the action tonight for you, Dwight Stones, Lair Overton, and Dan O'Brien. Gang? All right, John, thanks so much. We always start with the women's mile. There's the NCAA meet record and the NCAA lead by Maya Ramsden of Harvard, who is in this race. But we look at Flomina Asikol of Florida. She has been busy this weekend. She is the top returner in this field. She was third in the event last year and the second fastest performance in the NCAA this season behind Maya Ramsden of hometown Harvard. Both Ramsden and Asikol have run below the meet record this season, so that is something worth watching. Also, keep your eyes on Kimberly May, who is the fastest qualifier out of the semis. Both Ramsden and May are from New Zealand, representing their respective schools. There is your list of competitors, 10 finalists in total. So we only lost six of the 16 in the prelims on Friday. They will stay on those two groups until they hit the straightaway, then they will break for the pole. Kimberly May and her teammate Shannon Flockhart both looked fantastic in what they ran yesterday with Flockhart leading off the distance medley relay, running a fantastic 318 split. She led when she handed things off, and Kimberly May was the anchor on that DMR that finished sixth. Maya Ramsden coming off a very busy weekend in which she appeared just a week ago at the World Indoor Championships. Representing her native New Zealand, she is currently in second place. Kimberly May leading so far as we come up to the first 400 meters or at 440 yards. 66.5 for the first 440 yards. This is the only non-metric event in the championships. So impressive what Maya Ramsden is doing coming off of making that world indoor final. Her coach Alex Gibby said the jet lag was about 80% digested by Thursday. One of the reasons she wanted to go and race was because they really hadn't outside of Milrose run outside of Boston this year. She wanted that experience. Also wanted the opportunity to get out there and compete on the elite stage given the aspirations that she has for late this summer and appearing in an Olympic Games. She said it was really validating for her to go in and compete with that caliber of competition. B. Lejep Karui of Oklahoma State, Kaylee McCabe of West Virginia, also right there in the thick of it. Worth noting, Flamena Asikol, big implications for Florida Gators and the team hopes that they have this evening. Asikol, who's in the middle of the field in all white of Florida, just snuck into this final on time. She was the last time qualifier from yesterday, then helped her team in the distance medley relay the last event on Friday evening. Kimberly May looks incredibly composed right now, looking really relaxed right there up front. We've seen a whole lot of trouble and traffic in a number of the middle distance and distance races, especially in qualifying. She's done a great job of getting up and out in front of any of it. Looked incredibly smooth in those qualifying heats. She ran 431.84 just yesterday. 68-5 for the second, 440 yards. They split the half mile at 215. And May continuing to set the pace. Ramsden happy to follow. Jip Curry there in the orange of Oklahoma State in third. And Flavina Asikol continuing to go back in the pack. Watch out for Margo Appleton looking to move very well of Virginia. Appleton was fourth in this event last year and then finished third outdoors at 1,500 meters. Maya Ramsden in threatening position right now, seeing her creep up on the shoulder of Kimberly May, and she's going to the front. 440 yards remaining. Maya Ramsden decides to take control. Kimberly May still there in second. Bilat Jepkarui of Oklahoma State remains in third. 
Flamina Asikol is out of it and might not score. Maya Ramsden just has looked so strong since winning the outdoor NCAA 1500 meter title last year, has continued to just get better, get stronger, and race even more confidently. She also has that 3000 meters coming up a little bit later. Said going into the world indoor final, did not have clear goals. Her goals though today are very, very clear. No response to Maya Ramsden's kick here. The gap just gets bigger. It's just a matter of whether Bilal Jepkarui will pass Kimberly May for second place and if the meet record will be broken. 4.27.18, she smashes it. Jepkarui does finish second. And Florida's Asikol will get eighth, so she will score a point. A very smartly run race by Maya Ramsden, the junior from Harvard. 63 seconds for her last 440 yards. Stayed in complete, in complete control, plotted her move, her kick perfectly. Went around, got right into front to settle in onto the rail. You see how she opens up and extends that stride. So efficient, throws up the number one as she grows across the finish line. NCAA champion, and she'll be back in the 3,000 meters for one more chance. She is the first female athlete from an Ivy League school to win this event. She wins it in style with a meet record, 425-13. Bilal Jepgururi was second. Kimberly May finishes third. And John Anderson has the winner downstairs. Uh, they tell me first Ivy League winner of the mile. Congratulations. Meet record. Congratulations. I don't know what your goals were, but it feels like you accomplished those. Um, it looked like anybody's race for the first three quarter. How did you make it yours over the last two laps? You know, Gibby and I really talked about before coming into this race that uh, in practice we've been practicing these cut downs for the last 400 and a lot of them like a lot of times that part of the workout people are doing individually so I'm by myself just doing the cut down and we really talked about like kind of just zoning into my own how my body feels and just going through the motions that we do at least once a week during practice and so just switching the brain off letting the muscle memory take over and then it's just you in the track. Okay, so again, you blew the roof off the dump. Uh, show us where your people are today. They're kind of everywhere. I've got my teammates somewhere up there. There they are. Uh, yeah, there they are. Yep. <laughs> my roommates are right there. Nice. <laughs> yeah, those girls have been with me through everything. Couldn't do it without those two. Um, and I don't see my family right now, but they're somewhere in here. Do they have t-shirts with your picture on them? They do. <laughs> they do have t-shirts with my picture it's on them. It's a little vain, but I guess, no, they're good, good to have those people when it comes <laughs> Thank here. Thank you all. Uh, just, Ken, describe kind of the last two weeks of your life that are here, and then they're in Scotland, and now you're back here, and you're in Silly Champ. My suitcase is still packed. I haven't <laughs> unpacked yet. I would say that's really it in a nutshell. My room is getting messier and messier. My roommates have started sending me TikToks of like messy rooms to make me feel better. Right. Like it's not that bad. Um, but no, in all seriousness, like just so grateful for everyone. Like I said this to someone last week, but every time I've kind of been like, this, these are the crazy things I want to do in this short span of time. No one has ever said you can't do it. Everyone in my corner has been like, that's amazing. We think you can do it. We want to help you make it happen. And to me, that's like, that's why I'm doing this. You know, like those kind of relationships are really what I'm in it for. So, so grateful. Congratulations. Put some Boston in the first meet here in Boston. And as uh, long as you're packed, we'll see you in Eugene. <laughs> Thanks so much. There you go. Back upstairs, right? All right, John. She's the first to uh, go under 426 twice in college history. And you can expect to see her at the Olympic Games representing her native New Zealand in Paris this summer. When we come back, we go on the infield. It's time for the 60 meters. Track for just a moment into the infield and the women's high jump. It was a great competition. This is Lamara Diston of Texas A&M, the senior from Jamaica, who set the collegiate record two weeks ago at the conference meet by jumping two meters, six, six and three quarters. She's been chasing that mark for a couple of years and a beautiful clearance, easy clearance at six, five and a half on her first attempt. She is the two time defending champ. Now, Rachel Glenn, now of Arkansas, transferred from South Carolina. The bar at six, five and a half. This would be her personal best. And she makes it easily and cleanly. But at this point, she was behind by him by one miss. So that means she'd have to clear the next height. And by the way, that clearance at six, five and a half, that's an Olympic qualifying standard. Only she and Vashti Cunningham of the US have that mark. Rachel Glenn at six, six and three quarters. 
And she makes it with a slight brush. She ties the collegiate record. It's the number two jump in the world this year, and she just brushed it on the way over. Third at this meet last year, second at the U.S. champs, made the world championship team, of course, didn't go. So she jumps two meters, six, six and three quarters to steal it from the senior from Texas A&M. What a great competition in the women's high jump, but more importantly, 10 points for Arkansas. And let's take a look at the standings after nine events. Florida with a seven point lead over Ole Miss. Oklahoma State just a point back and then Arkansas point back in fourth. Lots of running and jumping and throwing left to go as we get ready now for the final of the women's 60 meters. NCAA meet record Julian Alfred of Texas. She just won the World Indoor Championship 60 meters last week in Scotland. And Bri Brianna Liston, who is in this final, there she is. She has the fastest time amongst Kalesians this year. Well, talking to her coach, Dennis Shaver, I said, what does she need to do to be the national champion? And he says, she must have a better start. She did not have a better, she did not have a great start in the semifinal. She came off the track and said it was the worst race of the season. She still ran 7.07. There's Jacia Sears. She was, she was last year's winner at the SEC championships. Runner up at the SECs two weeks ago this season. There's Kayla Jackson. What does she do? She only, she just makes finals. Coach Carol at Georgia says this kid rises up when the moment is largest. We've got the best sprinter in collegiate, in the collegiate ranks right now with against the best closer, Jacia Sears. And for Kayla Jackson to win this, she has got to get a great start and hold off the charge that she know will be coming. Jaden Mays from Oregon, look at her, she's in another final. And Grace Stark, we'll see her in the 60 meter hurdles later tonight. And those three women all share the collegiate lead at 7.07. Two of them doing it in the semis on Friday. Good start for Kayla Jackson and also for Brianna Liston. Here comes Jackson, but she can't catch Liston. Liston's going to win it. Jackson second. Mays, it was Mays of Oregon third. Jacia Sears probably fourth. 7.03. A new lifetime best and a new collegiate lead for Brianna Liston. Well, and that will also be another LSU record for her. She she had tied the record at 707 with Aaliyah Hobbs. Now she's the outright holder of that record. There you get a chance to see the start. Brianna Liston, third from the right. Look how simple she makes that first step. Boom, she hits her angles and she is off and running. Great start. For Jaden Mays there in the yellow and green, but there you see Jacia Sears in the middle. Kayla Jackson does what she does, and that's just rise up and run well. But nobody was catching Brianna Liston tonight. 7.03 is the second fastest performer ever in collegiate history at 60 meters. She wins it over Kayla Jackson, Jaden Mays, and Jacia Sears, and she is downstairs with John. <laughs> Uh, we were just watching this, Dwight, and I said, how did it look? She goes, awesome. We'll try to draw a little more out of you than just awesome. Uh, but what went right in that that was a 7.03 60-meter run? I would definitely have to say the start. Um, I think I went back yesterday, regrouped, and um, tried to hit the start. I hit the SECs. I think I hit it better that time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're tickled by this. What's it mean to you? A lot. It means a lot. Um, you know... It means a lot to me, especially because my mom's here. Oh, terrific. Yeah, this is her first meet from, I've been LSU, so <laughs> I didn't want her to come this far to not, you know, have something to smile about. You come from two wonderful programs. Jamaica's got great sprinters, LSU's got great sprinters. What's it like to be a part of those two sororities? Great. Um, my teammates back home, they pushed me. My current teammates right now pushed me, even the pro athletes that train with us. For example, uh, Aliyah Hobbs, Makaya Briscoe, mm -hmm. Favor, Philly, everybody. Um, they push me. <laughs> That's all. They, they just motivate me every day. They push me, you know, and I think you need that. I feel like you should leave me and just totally go hug your mom. Okay, if I could find her. <laughs> <laughs> She'll find her. Uh, Dwight, that's what's happening there in the 60. When we come back, this is where Arkansas is going to flex his muscles, and we will see if they can indeed put a headlock on the championship. It's the 400 meters, and that means we'll see Amber Anning. We all kind of push each other every day. We do kind of carry a lot running the four and the 200, but I think it's just kind of breaking everything down, taking stuff step by step, and just having confidence in ourselves. No doubt about it, Amber Anning is the 400 meter champion of the SEC. I'm looking forward to going out there and showing all the hard work and finishing off the indoor strong. 
Let's look at the updated standings after that 60 meter dash. Florida now with a 10 point lead over Ole Miss. Oklahoma State one back in third, then Oregon and Arkansas tied for fourth. Seven events remaining, lots of scoring to be done. Here is the women's 400, the first of two sections. You can win and score from either section final. Four athletes in each. The NCAA meet record set last year by Britton Wilson, who has since gone pro. And Amber Anning, who is in the second section, has the fastest time in the country amongst collegians. There is Nikisha Price, one of three Arkansas Razorbacks in this two-section final. Well, runner-up at the SEC Championships two weeks ago, and a flashback to Britton Wilson there. What a season she had. But Chris, uh, Chris Johnson has uh, talked a little bit about the, these athletes doing the 400 meters and 200s. He said, it's a big ask, I know. There's a lot of pressure on them, but we are prepared. There's Aaliyah Butler. She was fifth at the SEC Indoor Championship. She has gotten better week by week. And Coach Carroll at Georgia said she needs, she has an opportunity to make a statement run here. She needs to be in good position and push harder than she ever has before between two and 400. Three of the four runners in this first section from the SEC. From the inside, Jermisha Arnold of A&M, Savannah Southerton of Michigan, then Butler of Georgia and Price of Arkansas. They will stay in their lanes for the first two turns and then break for the pole, which is so very important to get that pole position without breaking stride. Well, Leah Butler has gone out nice and quick. She's looking to challenge Nikisha Price on the outside there, but Nikisha Price, and this is what Arkansas does. They get to the pole and then they want to put on, then they want to push it into another gear. And just makes a Leah Butler just back off a little bit. So she lost a little momentum there at that break. It is all Nikisha Price now. It's up to her to set the standard for the second section to shoot for. But Aaliyah Butler looks like she's got something in the tank. Does she have enough? The turnover just isn't there. It's going to be Nikisha Price of Arkansas, the junior from Jamaica, setting the time to beat 50-99. 51 flat it now corrects to. That is the time that the Runners in the second section will be shooting for. And very important for Arkansas to score extremely well in this 400 meter event as well as the 200 meters later. Well, we saw Arkansas where they were in the scoring. They had 20 points. They were 12, 12 points down on the leaders. But this is where they are going to score in bundles. Look at Keisha Price there on the outside. She just so runs so well within herself. She knows exactly where she is on the pacing. She really slammed into that inside lane, and it did back Aaliyah Butler off. But this is a tough ask for Nikisha Price. I don't think this heat is as filled with as many fast people as the next one. And this is almost like a time trial. She's out there running it all by herself, and she really holds herself together all the way to the finish line. So Nikisha Price of Arkansas, the first of the three Razorbacks in this two-section final. She wins the first section and establishes the time to beat at 51 flat. Aaliyah Butler second from Georgia at 51.64. So now we're ready for the second uh, section of the 400 meters, and this one featuring the number one qualifier from yesterday and the leader amongst collegians, Amber Anning, the senior from Arkansas. Well, she was in the second heat at the SEC Indoor Championships, and she ran with authority in that final, slamming the door on everybody. But this just seems to be her year. Last year it was Britton Wilson's year. This year it's Amber Anning's year. And then Rosie Effiong, her teammate on the outside. I can tell you, these two have been in this position so many different times during practice. And always a little strange when you're racing against a teammate. You have to put the blinders on and almost forget that this is your friend. And then Yemi John in the inside there in lane four from from Southern California, also teammates with Amber Anning when they were on Team Great Britain last year at the World Championships. But when they were staging to get into the blocks here, they didn't say a thing to each other. They didn't even look at each other. You kind of have to forget about your friendships when you're trying to win individual titles. The difference in personal best between Anning and Effion is just 11 hundredths of a second. But what an advantage for Amber Anning to have Rosie Effion on her outside to key off of. They both want that pole. And Anning is in perfect position to get it as they get ready to come off that final turn and head for that pole. It is going to be Anning 
and Effiong, 1-2. Now they've got to set their sights on the 51 flat that was put down by their teammate, Nikisha Price, in section one. If they can both get ahead of that, it'll be a 1-2-3 Arkansas sweep. Effiong trying to make a move here, coming off the final turn. It's Anning on the inside with Effiong trying to pass. But Anning is going to hold her off. Now, do they get the time? Yes, they do. 50.79 is the official time. Effiong at 51.03 plus the 51 flat by Nikisha Price. It's a sweep for the Razorbacks. 24 points for Arkansas in the women's 400. Exactly what Coach Johnson said they needed to do. Well, and he said there's a, a lot of pressure on these young ladies, and it's a big ask to, to have them do this in the 400 and then try to come back in the 200 meters as well. But this was an interesting race because Rosie, Rosie Effiong, she likes to go to the pole first. And I was wondering if Amber Anning was going to back off and let her, but she didn't. She got there first. And how many times have you probably seen this in practice? Amber Anning slightly ahead, Rosie Effiong right behind. But this was not an easy race for these Lady Arkansas Razorbacks. Look at Amber Anning. She begins to struggle in the last 50 meters, and I thought maybe she was going to die out here. Rosie Effiong was the one who looked like she had more energy, but Amber Anning just continues all the way through the line. But, oh, Amber Anning, the look of pain on her face was quite evident. But this is a great start for the Arkansas Razorbacks. So Anning wins the overall title with a time of 50.79. She ran 50.74 yesterday. Pretty consistent performances. Nikisha Price, the winner of Section 1, 51 flat, gets second. Rosie Effiong, second in Section 2, gets third overall. 24 points for the Razorbacks, and that is going to go a long way in their defense. Defense of their title, they both rushed off to get ready for the 200 meters that is not really that long from now. And that is the first ever sweep in the 400, and Arkansas has pulled it off. When we come back, it'll be time for the women's 800 meters here at the track at New Balance. Let's take a look back at the pentathlon, which concluded on Friday. There you see last year's champion indoors, that's Jaden O'Brien, and it came down to the final event, the 800 meters, and there were a number of athletes there. That's Christine Blasetviche from Texas. She would take the win over Jaden O'Brien, but Jaden O'Brien would defend her national indoor title. There she is getting some congratulations from one of her teammates. But Janelle Rogers of Ball State, she would be second, but there you see how important that was. She struggled with injuries all season long, but Jaden O'Brien would defend her title. Janelle Rogers would become runner up at the national championships. Our next NBA Wednesday doubleheader starts in Miami with the Heat hosting Jokic and the Nuggets at 7.30 Eastern. Then LeBron and the Lakers head to Sacramento to take on the Kings. Our coverage tips with NBA Countdown at 7 on ESPN and the app. All right, let's update the overall standings with that huge point total from Arkansas. They got 24 points in the 400 and then vaults them into first place by eight points over Florida with Ole Miss 10 back in third, and then a lot of teams within one point of the podium. As we get ready now for the women's 800 meter final, the NCAA meet record held by Roisin Willis from back last year. And there is Michaela Rose, who is maybe the largest favorite in an individual running event in these championships. She is the reigning NCAA 800 meter outdoor oh, champion, man. the fastest collegian this year. She has been sub two twice this indoor season. Eight finalists here. There are the competitors. Five on the inside section and three on the outside. They will stay there till they go through the second turn and then race for the pole position. One that I've yet to see Michaela Rose not get. She is certainly a front runner, but you know, it's never ambitious or aggressive when she does it because of how smooth she is when she carries it. It's just her racing style, 27.9 through that first 200 meters. Keep your eyes on the clock for this one because I do think that that time you saw could very well go down. Juliet Whitaker in fantastic position as well. She was part of last year a 1-2 Stanford finish. 
To remind you, Roshane Willis's meet record 159.93, so just barely under two minutes as Michaela Rose takes the field through 58.3. So it's well within striking distance, but she has to be aggressive on this third 200, and she is getting all she can take from Juliet Whitaker, the sophomore from Stanford, is right there with her. Continuing to stay extremely relaxed. Michaela Rose, very experienced in these types of situations. She said, Coach Franks knows I can handle a 58, knows I can handle a 57. If that's what it takes, whatever I need to get out, stay safe, and get through. She's going to have to drop a 30-second last 200, and she is not able to shake Juliet Whitaker so far. Whitaker with a two-flat 05 lifetime best, so no slouch is she, and she is hunting Michaela Rose. Always better to be the hunter than the hunted. Michaela Rose can feel her coming up on her shoulder. What does she have left in the tank after leading this entire race? Whitaker goes wide, and she's going to take the title. Juliet Whitaker with a new meet record, 159-53 with a 58 it, was, it went out in 58.3. They went, came back in just over 60 seconds, and that race was totally made by Michaela Rose. Juliet Whitaker came in running the fourth fastest time in collegiate indoor history. The runner-up last year is your champion in 2024. Look at how she plotted and executed this move perfectly at the top of the turn, creeping right onto the shoulder, going stride for stride with Michaela Rose and just throwing it down into another gear. When you go onto the shoulder, you got to go through with authority. And she charges around into that outside, into that second lane. Great job with the dive there. And then the look of elation. Here are the results. The first time two collegiate women under two minutes in the same race. Whitaker takes it with a meet record over Michaela Rose with Megan Hunter of BYU well back in third. And the new champion is downstairs with John. I do have the champ, and I don't know if a surprise champ is the right word, but in the first three races we had, number one in the form chart had won until Michaela Rose came along and Juliet Whitaker got by her. Uh, that seemed to me textbook racing. I'm going to sit on her shoulder and go. Um, what did it look like to you? Yeah, you know, I knew she kind of always tends to take it out. So I kind of had faith that she was kind of going to take it. And I really just wanted to try and stay on her as long as I could. And then just coming around that last corner, like, I just wanted to come off. Usually, like, I'm not really feeling like I have that much in my legs coming home. Um, so I really just had to focus on just, like, my form and just getting my knees up and just sprinting as hard as I could for the last bit. I was going to say, what brought you through then? If you come through, there's a little doubt. Yeah, I think I just like really wanted it this year. Um, I think this was just like kind of a dream. I was kind of replaying it all year in my mind. Ever since last year, you know, getting second, I was obviously really happy about that, especially as a freshman. And obviously Roisin winning just made me even more excited and happy for her. But I think I kind of wanted to feel that myself. Um, so I think, yeah, I've just kind of been dreaming of that. And I just tried to think of that in the last stretch. There you go, back to back for Nerd Nation. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. There you go, Dwight. All right, John, that's the number eight time in the world this year, number by eight. the way. Her first time under two minutes and an NCAA champion defeating last year's champion. When we come back, we're back on the infield to the straightaway, the women's 60 meter hurdles. Let's update the standings, and Oklahoma State made a move thanks to points from that 800 meters. So it's Arkansas by 12 over Florida, then Oklahoma State seven back in third, Ole Miss, Oregon, BYU. As we get ready for the next event on the infield on the straightaway, the women's 60 meter hurdles, Akira Nugent of Arkansas with the meet record 772. And USC well represented here. This is Jasmine Jones. From the women of Troy, she will be in lane number five. She is the collegiate leader. Well, she ran that race uh, February 16th at the USA Track and Field Championships. Uh, Pac-12 schools don't have a conference meet to go to. And there's Grace Stark, the SEC champion. She won this title back in 2022. But in the prelims yesterday, she beat Aaliyah Armstrong, and that makes two races back-to-back -back that Grace Starks has bettered Aaliyah Armstrong. There's Aaliyah Armstrong, 2022 NCAA Outdoor Champion. It's interesting, Aaliyah Armstrong 
has run some fast times, but at the SEC Championships and yesterday in the semis, she just didn't look like she had great pop. Like something was just missing a little bit, like she was playing it just a little bit safe. All the action on the inside of the track. And there's Destiny Hoove, and she had a personal best 8.03 yesterday in the semis to get into this race. And I asked Coach Chris Johnson about her, and he said, I didn't want to scare her, but I told her she could be a game changer. The point she gets here in the hurdles could be the difference between Arkansas winning the title or Arkansas not winning the title. So it's Armstrong in three, Stark in four, Jones in five. Most of the action on the right side of the straightaway. Armstrong out well, so is Jones. Jasmine Jones, Jasmine Jones, here comes Grace Stark, but it's Jones, Stark, Armstrong. Those are your top three. 777, that is an improvement on the NCAA lead for the year by one one hundredth of a second. Well, that's a personal best for Jasmine Jones. And one of the things that Joanna Hayes, the hurdle coach at USC, said she wanted Jasmine Jones. She said she wasn't challenged in her semifinal, but she wanted she wanted Jasmine to mix it up with the fastest runners in the country. And those are the hurdlers from the SEC. She wanted her to level up. And boy, did she level up today. Grace Stark got her really good start like she normally does in the inside. So aggressive to the first hurdle. So it's interesting to see the seven strides versus eight to the first. But it was Jasmine Jones. She just looked determined over those last two hurdles. Look at the focus and determination. She's really tall, so she has to get down on the hurdles a little bit. But congratulations to her. And the winner is downstairs with John. I am with the winner who kept the shield in front. We talked about this a lot on Thursday. What's it mean to keep the shield in front? It just means to compete with integrity, have that shield in the front, just to really like put it all out there, head high, chest out, all that. Good. How'd you pull this off? Because you're in there with some gals that can really go. <laughs> yes. I was really focused this, today, this morning. My coach and I had a great talk last night about our plan to execute and get it done. So like when you cross the line and go, I just won the NCAA championship. <laughs> It's amazing. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. The shield, we'll let the shield go. Jasmine, con congratulations. Thank you so much. All what? right, John, Jasmine Jones, the fastest time in the country for Collegians, winning it over Grace Stark and Aaliyah Armstrong. Destiny Hooven of Arkansas breaks eight seconds, runs 799, and picks up five points for Arkansas with her effort. So the women of Troy's Jasmine Jones wins the hurdles here with the fastest time in the country. Look back at a field event that happened yesterday in the women's pole vault. This is Hannah Mall, the freshman from Washington, on her first attempt at 15 feet, one inch. And she would be over and clinch the title with that jump. And believe it or not, it's the first pole vault title for the University of Washington. There you see her come over, get congratulated by her identical twin sister, Amanda Mall, and then coach Toby Stevenson. But Amanda Mall, her sister, just missed this meet by one centimeter. But after a, a fantastic summer, she's an NCAA champion. All right, here are the team standings after 13 events. Arkansas with a nine point lead over Florida now. And then LSU, another 12 points back in third. And Oklahoma State drops to fourth with a big event coming up for the Razorbacks, the 200-meter final, the meet record held by Julian Alfred, who set that in altitude last year in Albuquerque. And the meet record or the meet lead or the NCAA lead is by Jamisha Ford of South Carolina, who is in section two. The Arkansas Razorbacks did not get such great lane draws in this particular race. This is Rosie Effion. We saw her 25 minutes ago in the 400. She got a good lane draw in lane five, and Amber Anning got lane number three, and that's pretty tight, even on this track. And let's just remind you what happened 25 minutes ago. Amber Anning held off her teammate, Rosie Effion, to win the overall title. Effion's time gave her third, and their teammate, Nikisha Price, who is in the next heat, the next section, she ended up with a second time. It was a sweep for the Razorbacks. They just need 10 overall points out of this event 
and they clinch the title, they will defend their title. Anning in three, Sears in four, F. Young in five, Kayla Jackson in six. This is a stacked heat, Dan. Well, it's a SEC heat. It's really amazing. These athletes are all very familiar with each other. Keep it on Kayla Jackson there on the outside. She didn't have to run the 400 meters 25 minutes ago, and Coach Carroll at Georgia said she is in phenomenal condition right now. She did, however, get second in the 60 meters about 35 minutes ago. It's all the way in lanes. From the inside out, Jaysha Sears is out crazy fast. She makes up the stagger on Rosie Effiong in the first 80 meters. Now she's going after Kayla Jackson on the outside. She is serious about avenging her, what she considers a poor showing in the 60. But here comes Jackson, and Jackson gets it at the tape. Sears paying for that quick, early pace. 22.63 for Kayla Jackson. Just off her lifetime best of 22.55, Jaysha Sears runs 22.69, one one-hundredth of a second faster than she ran in the semi. So the time to beat now for section two, 22.63. Amber Anning was way back and forth at 23.62. Rosie Effiong, 23.10. Well, you got to take your hat off to Jaysha Sears for going for it. You know, Coach Dwayne Ross will have no complaints with her laying it down, especially with a field like this. If you want to score against yeah, a field like this, Rosie Effion, Amber Anning, Jackson. and you can see they were a little bit, they were a little bit fatigued, but Jaysha Shears, she laid it on the line, paid the price in the last 50 meters, and Kayla Jackson got her at the end, but uh, that is some courage. Well, I gave you the results uh, a little prematurely, but there they are official. Kayla Jackson establishes the time for Section 2 to shoot for it, 22.63. The Razorbacks get third and fourth in that first section. Not what they were hoping for, but they are a little bit winded from 25 minutes ago running the 400 and not getting great lane draws in Section 1. We have you covered on Selection Sunday. It all starts at noon Eastern on ESPN with college basketball live to prep the day. At 6, it's Sports Center, followed by Bracketology with breakdowns of each region. At 8, the women's field of 68 is revealed with continuing coverage right after. Everything is also streaming live on the ESPN app. And we are ready now for section two of this 200 meters. Time to beat 22-63 by Kayla Jackson of Georgia from section number one. And this section features the NCAA leader, the freshman from South Carolina, Jamisha Ford. Uh, not just the freshman from South Carolina, the fastest freshman ever. She comes in here as, as the favorite, the SEC champion. And not only is she the favorite, she's got some pretty fancy shoes on as well. Maybe we get a look at those. There's Mackenzie Long. Had a great indoor and outdoor season last year. She didn't get the best lane draw. She's in lane four. And Nikisha Price, the Arkansas Razorback who we saw on the 400 meters, she's clear down in lane three. We saw some fatigue with Rosie Effiong and Amber Anning. I'm sure Nikisha Price is feeling it as well. And then Jaden Mays, what do you know? Another national final for her from Oregon on the outside. Price was second on time overall in the 400 just about 35 minutes ago. Now it's been, check that, 30 minutes ago. And her teammates struggled in that first section, finishing third and fourth. Six of the eight finalists from the SEC. From the inside, it's Price, then Long, then Ford, then Mays. Pretty even coming into the first 100 meters. Now a little move by Jamisha Ford through the turn. Price is struggling down in lane three. Here it is, Jamisha Ford, the fastest in the country this year amongst collegians, and she wins the title overall, 22-34. And that's a new lifetime best and a new collegiate leader for the freshman from South Carolina.
Well, I have to say that Jamisha Ford, she, she had the advantage certainly over the Arkansas Razorback. She didn't run the 60 earlier today. She didn't have to worry about the 400 meters. She comes in here and just concentrates on the 200 meters. But there you see her second from left in the all black uniform. Look at the turnover, just beautiful arm swing. She never ever looks like she's in distress. She comes off the turn, looked like Jaden Mays was making a nice move out there, but just too much power, too much speed by the freshman from South Carolina. And the top two finishers in this second section were also the top two finishers overall. Ford with a new collegiate league and lifetime best at 22-34, and Mackenzie Long getting second. And the Arkansas Razorbacks swept the 400. Here in the 200, they swept the bottom of the 200, totaled six points, so they have not yet clinched the team title, even though they got three of their runners in the final. But Jamisha Ford, the new champion, is downstairs with John. New champion and kind of new to the NCAA sports world. Freshman, you're not supposed to be doing this this quickly. How come you're doing this so quickly? Coach Hall and his plans. That's it. Okay, tell me the race plan, because it's got to be quick to get done in 22.34 seconds. The race plan was go out here, trust my training, trust what my coach told me to do, get out here, execute, and run my race. How is it you know who a lot of these ladies are, and they come with great resumes, how do you fit yourself in there and go, okay, I belong and I can beat them? Uh, well, I've been watching them. I've been watching college since I was young. And uh, I was actually a big fan of everybody that I ran against here. So uh, that really, like, gave me a lot of motivation and stuff. And I know what I'm capable of. So that just said, that's a good limit on myself. Okay, I want to talk about the bling real quick and we panned down. Because Dan talked about your shoes. He loved them. Yeah. That's all hand done? We just didn't put some glue on and just throw them on there? Yeah, you t I did it one by one, so, you know, it takes time. And if you want to perfect something, you got to take time. So, yeah. There you go. Dwight, the shoes take a long time. The 200 didn't take very long at all. Jamisia Ford, con congratulations Thank on you. being a national champ. Thank you so much. John, it's got to be the shoes. We already know that. Well, here's Parker Valby. She's Florida's all-everything distance runner, and she is going to be responsible for trying to keep their hopes alive in the team title chase. 3,000 is next. As previously promised, the 3,000 is next, but here are the updated standings. Arkansas, 15 points now over Florida. Georgia, 10 back, tied with Ole Miss for third. Two events remaining. The aforementioned and promised 3,000 next. With Jenny Berenger, now Simpson, the NCAA meet record holder from 15 years ago, and Olivia Markezic, who is in this final with the best time in the country. But there's Parker Valby, won the 5,000 meters last night. She has been Florida's juggernaut distance runner, and she now has to do what she can to keep Florida in the mix. One in collegiate record setting fashion and by 22 seconds, the three time now NCAA champion, Parker Valby. And this is a stacked field. I expect this race to be very spicy with the athletes that you have, including last year's steeplechase champion, Olivia Markezic of Notre Dame, who also has the fastest time in the NCAA coming into this weekend. She ran 8.40.42 back in December. She was part of Notre Dame's distance medley relay on Friday night that finished second. She was running the anchor leg. The last name on that list of competitors, Maya Ramsden, did not show up to the starting line for this 3,000. She did not double back from the mile, which she won earlier in meet record fashion. So we have 15 runners in this 3,000 meter final. Understandable for Maya Ramsden, given the workload that she has carried over the last eight days with the World Indoor Final and the 1500 meters coming back there from that competition to then race in the NCAA Indoor oh, Championships, yes. winning a mile. And we're off in this women's 3K final. 15 laps around the track. So these 15 athletes with sections on the inside and outside. They will stay there till they complete two full turns. So Mina Asikol doubling back from the mile. 
Now, she finished eighth in that mile race, which was a bit of a disappointment for the Gators. They were hoping for more than that. She just got one point there. And ostensibly, they need to finish first and third to keep their hopes of a team title alive. And that, a lot of that's going to fall on Flamina Asicole, who is currently leading this race with her teammate, Parker Valby, in third. An unusual position, really, to see Parker Valby sitting back usually, but it is how we saw her run out of the unseated section at the SEC Championships in the 3000. She didn't yet have a qualifying time for the NCAA, so had to run it uh, uh, aggressively and honestly at the, end, at the uh, SEC meet. And one thing about this field that you have, it is loaded with NCAA champions. You have Parker Valby, the 5K outdoor champion last year, and the cross-country champion last year, and then already a champion here in the 5,000. You have Olivia Markezich. You have Taylor Rowe, who was two years ago the champion in the 3,000 of Oklahoma State. And then you have the duo from BYU in this field who were part of the distance medley relay that won on Friday night. So Asikol in the lead with her teammate Valby in third. Uh, honest pace being set because they're pretty well strung out. We'll step aside for a second and get you caught up in what happened in the women's shot put. Well, let's go over to the throwing theater here at the track at New Balance and show you what happened in the women's shot put. This is Jada Ross, the junior from Oregon. She was eighth at the NCAA championships indoors last year. And on her first attempt, she would knock one over the 60 foot line by a half an inch and she would take an early lead. No real lead changes until the fourth round when the junior from Colorado State, Maya Lesnar, let one go. And that's the fourth round throw for her, 60 feet, nine and a half. She was at Arizona State, decided to transfer to Colorado State. And now we go back to Jada Ross. She was the final competitor that could overcome Maya Lesnar. This is her sixth attempt. And she would go just under 60 feet, 59, four and three quarters. And Maya Lesnar would take home the title. There you see her. <laughs> Congratulations to her and her coach, Brian Bedard. And she's the first shot put women's indoor champion from Colorado State. There are the final results. It was close, just a two and a quarter inch victory for Maya Lesnar over Jada Rosen. Okay, a little bit has changed since we went away. Now is Markezic in the lead. And even more than that, it appears Flomena Asikul has stepped off the track. So has Taylor Rowe of Oklahoma State through 1,000 meters. They're at 255. This was the plan for Olivia Markezic to make sure she kept this pace on it. Really wanted to be sure this race got out fast and did not leave it to a kicker's finish. Olivia Markezic, such an impressive progression in her career at Notre Dame, actually started her career as a walk-on. She was an Irish legacy because her dad was previously the 10,000 meter school record holder, wanted to be as part of a team and compete at the collegiate level. There you have Flomena Askell who will not be able to contribute in terms of the team points that the Gators were hoping for. Obviously still have big points there with Parker Valby and the opportunity that she has. But they needed 16 points to keep it, them in the meet with one event remaining. And now with her stepping off the track, that makes Arkansas they have clinched their team title without any points being scored in the 4 by 400 relay. They don't, they will not need them. I want to point out too how well Alabama is running right now with the duo that they have, of course, Doris Lemongole and Hilda Olomomoy. Saw them in the 5,000 as well. Worth noting that 5,000 race, we've talked about Parker Valby's meet record or collegiate record and meet record. She pulled five other athletes in the field to personal bests with that performance. Very consistent now, settling into a good pace, 70.5 on that last 400 meters. And so long as Markezic is pushing the pace, Valby is probably happy to stay right where she is, but it is not normal to see her following someone in a race. <laughs>
Markezich wanted to get out and make sure that she stayed out of any sort of trouble and kind of forced the field to run where she is comfortable. She really gained a lot of confidence last year, not just in that NCAA championship steeplechase race, but also with that fourth place finish that she had at the U.S. championships. Her fitness, her confidence have really been on par with one another over the course of the last year. In talking to Coach Will Palmer from the University of Florida about Parker Valby's race on Friday night, he said they talked the night before, and there were some nuances that they had in the game plan, but the way that she read things and how that race played out proved her maturity, maturity and intuition. And there goes Valby. You could just tell that she was itching to take over. I might note that her lifetime best in this race, set at the SEC indoor meet three, two weeks ago, is just a couple of tenths off of the meet record, which is held by Jenny Berenger, now Simpson, one of America's greatest middle distance runners, Olympic medalist, world champion. So those are pretty big shoes to fill. And Berenger was a heck of a runner when she was at Col Colorado. But Balby, if she pushes here, she is certainly well within her capabilities of breaking that meet record and improving her personal best. To your point, Markezic ran under that meet record this year with the 840-42 that she ran. So both athletes certainly have that well within their realm of possibility. The last runner to repeat as 3K, 5K champion, Carissa Schweitzer of Missouri. That was six years ago. And she has gone on to be an Olympian as well as a very strong presence in the American distance mix. Parker Valby digging in right now. Saw her even in that collegiate record setting effort running so relaxed, so much so that she was paying attention to what was happening on the infield with what was going on with her teammate Claire Bryant in the long jump. And she again looks incredibly relaxed even as she throws down the gauntlet. 68.3, that last 400 meters. And this is a phenomenal field that Parker Valby is putting on a clinic in. She's going to have to go sub-66 for the last 400 meters, though. That's a big ask after all she has done these last several weeks and setting a collegiate record last night in the 5,000, but you certainly can't tell that she's not going for it. She absolutely is. Coming to the bell, one lap to go, 200 meters at 8.08. So she's got to go about 33 high in order to break that meet record. 66.7, the last 400, or last two, 400 meters leading up to the bell lap. And that's the same pace she's got to stay on in order to just sneak under that meet record and set a new personal best. Watch that clock carefully. 8.42.03 is the meet record. And she gets it. A new lifetime best and another new meet record for Parker Valby of Florida. 10 points for the Gators in the 3,000. Two races, two wins, two record-breaking performances from Parker Valby. All she does when she steps on the track, two things, win and rewrite the record books. What a special athlete she has become. All of the injury issues that she had to deal with over the course of the last couple of years, but she's the NCAA cross country champion. She is the collegiate record holder at 5,000 and the NCAA champion at 5,000 and 3,000 meters. And it took a 33.5 last 200 to do it, to give her the number three time in collegiate history in this event. And that makes it her fourth NCAA title and doing it all within less than a year. And we've talked to her many times. Oh, John Anderson certainly has. And she's just having a lot of fun out there. There you can see getting the congratulations from Flomena Azlikul, who helped her there up front, set up the race for Parker Valby in the victory. There is the new meet record, 8.41.50. Olivia Markezic, who set the early pace, ends up second. Doris 
Lemon, Lemo, Lemon Goulet finishes third for Alabama. And once again, many times now, Parker Valby downstairs with John. We gave you the last time you said, can we have a commercial? We did a commercial break. This time you're on, you're on my time this time. I'm a lot more tired than yesterday. How come? I only slept an hour last night. What happened? I don't know, adrenaline? I think I raced too late. Okay, so it wasn't insomnia. You, you, you weren't binging Netflix Not or anything. I have insomnia, no. <laughs> I probably sleep the most out of anyone. Actually, besides Flo. Flo sleeps more than me. Okay, 5K, you take it out and you just bury the people. Here, this one, on uh, Marcus that you sat on her shoulder. Right? Um, that's not usually what we see from you. How, how do we enjoy that race tactic and then wait and, and go a little later in the race? That wasn't really the plan. <laughs> the plan was to sit on Flo's shoulder, but she just got a little ahead of me, so I was like, might as well do it, you know? Mm -hmm. Less people to chase me. Yeah, sure, you'd be out in front. Uh, what happened? You said you spiked yourself? Like, that looks like a hideous gash. I do it in practice all the time. And I'm like, Palmer, I don't know where this came from. And he's like, you realize you kick your shins when you run. I'm like, no. You need to be I always have dirt on my legs, too. You need to be careful. Finally, this is your fourth championship, right? That's a I big deal. Face for on the wall. I know. Yeah, explain to people what that is. Um, so when you win four national championships at UF, which is like very common at our school, apparently, uh, <laughs> you get your face on the wall. And I've always said I wanted my face on the wall. That got my name on a little plaque, right. but like I wanted to be like Jasmine and Grant with like their big face. But they better let me choose the picture because I cannot look ugly in it. Like how big is big? Like are we talking like? How like a fathead big? Are you like six foot? I'm like six, two it's and a half, you? thank you. Okay, well, I'm five, ten. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm five, nine. Um, I ain't no fibber. Um, yeah, it's probably the size of me or you. Maybe in the middle. Okay, so we're talking obnoxiously large. Um, yeah, no, like you can see it. That's fantastic. Um, <laughs> you said about this meet and kind of the SEC indoor, first time, last time. Congratulations yes. on a really good first time, last time thank here in Boston. You, thank you. <laughs> Dwight? All right, John. Hi, Dwight. Where's Dwight? Oh, hey, Dwight. <laughs> I'm up here, Parker. Thank you very much. So she has been the whole Florida Gators distance crew and done more than her fair share. We come back. It's the 4 by 400 relay. The final field event of these championships here in Boston. This is women's triple jump. This is Amelia Jostrand, the junior at San Jose State. She's from Sweden. She was a Mountain West indoor champion. She was 15th in the long jump yesterday, and in the first round, she would go 45 feet and a quarter inch, and she would take an early lead, put the pressure on the rest of the field. But out of Texas Tech, Ruth, Ruta Las Main, the senior, number four all-time collegiate triple jumper, second at the Big 12 indoor championships from Latvia. This is her third attempt, and she would bounce one out almost two, two and a half feet farther for a personal best, 47, five and three quarters. She also represented Latvia at the 2023 World Championships, and this was just an absolutely amazing competition. 11 countries were represented in the women's triple jump from 16 different competitors, and there you see the top, top three. Congratulations to Ruta Lassmaid. After 16 events, here are the women's team standings. Arkansas has clinched it because Florida does not have a 4 by 400 relay in the meet. Georgia in third with 30, tied with Ole Miss. So congratulations, Arkansas defends once again. But they also have one of the best 4 by 400 teams in the country. They come in with the fastest time, fastest seed time amongst collegians. And moments ago, section two, won by the women of Troy, USC, and a season best for them. They established the time to beat for the section one teams at 327.62, followed closely by Houston at 328.28. So here are the four teams in contention in this section one final. It is going to be Arkansas who will start out in lane number five. There you see their lineup, Kaylin Brown, Joanne Reed, Sanu Jalo and Rosie Effiong. Amber Anning has been taken off the squad. You can imagine how tired those 400, 200 athletes have to be, even though Rosie Effiong is coming back to anchor this quartet. That's how they'll line up. Texas A&M in lane number three, then Georgia, Arkansas, and South Carolina on the outside.
fifth in all SEC Section 3 4x400 four relays here at the NCAA Championships for Texas a and This is Cameron Dixon, the sophomore. For Georgia, Kimberly Harris. For Arkansas, Kaylin Brown, the freshman. And Zaya Akins, a freshman from South Carolina. Well, if we go back to yesterday's qualifying round on the women's 400 meters, it was Kaylin Brown and Joanne Reed who came together at the break and kind of slowed each other down, broke each other's momentum. Neither one would get through to the final of the 400 meters. But when you look at this team and say, well, why, does, why is Arkansas running such a strong team? Well, they've done a number of combinations this season. But really, for Chris Johnson, he says it all. He says this is... You know, we knew that we knew that the turnaround was going to be tough. The 4-2 and into the 4x4 four four was going to be tough, but our women wanted to challenge themselves. And he's no stranger to experiments. Think about what Britton Wilson did at the outdoor championships last year. Arkansas women really want to go for it. And that's 51-47 for the freshman from Arkansas. And for Arkansas is Joanne Reed on second leg. For South Carolina, Janelle Registry, the junior. And what a statement it would be to win the final event of the entire meet and then go straight into celebrating that team championship, right? Make a statement in winning it as a team. Well, and this is such a strong event for the Arkansas Razorback women. Five out of the 10 fastest times ever run. There you see Rachel Glenn rooting her team on after a big win in the high jump for the Razorbacks. And five out of the 10 fastest 4x400 meter times have been run by the Lady Razorbacks. Rachel Glenn's happy she's not running this 4x400 relay. <laughs> Arkansas passes first. This is Sanu Jalo for the Razorbacks. 51-62, the carry for Joanne Reed. Sanu Jalo ran on the 4x4 at the SEC Championships for the Razorbacks. A great 800 meter runner, but a very strong 400 runner as well. For South Carolina, that's Jayla Jamison. For Georgia, Haley Tate. And for Texas A&M, Nisi Cabango. Well, this fourth leg is going to be really interesting. The Arkansas Razorbacks, they're going to, they're going to hand to Rosie Effiong, who was second in the 400 meters, and Jamisha Ford, the winner of the 200 meters. She'll go for the Carolina Game Cards, and Jamisha Ford is an excellent 400 meter runner, and she's just a little bit fresher than the senior Rosie Effion. Effion with a little bit of a gap, 51-75 for Sanu Jalo of Arkansas. Georgia well back, that is Dominique Mustin for Georgia. And seeing Rose, Rosie Effion run this final leg at this competition, it just goes off to what Chris Johnson said. This is for Arkansas and the legacy of the program. Rosie Effion continues to lead for Arkansas over Jamisha Ford, the 200 meter champion. She established a new collegiate lead. She improved on her collegiate lead in that 200. And Rosie Effion, look at the strength. She's still able to hold off Jamisha Ford. And Arkansas wins the final event, the 4x400 relay, making it look like a runaway points-wise. 51-18 on that anchor for Rosie Effion. Arkansas last year won it with 64 points. With that win, that would put them up to 65. So one point better than they won it with last year. And it's a three-peat in the 4x400 relay for the Razorbacks. Well, and it's only fitting that Rosie Effion would, Effion, the team captain, would bring them home. 325.99, they're under 326, and I think that's probably the third or fourth fastest time in the country this year. There has never been a team three-peat in this event at the NCAA Championships, and so fitting that Arkansas would be the team to do it. 325.99. That is just off their season the best. South Carolina ends up second, and the women of Troy finish third, and John is down with the victorious Arkansas Quartet. Uh, I really am not, Dwight. They seem to have scattered with joy. Well, uh, the teammates that didn't run have joy. The teammates that did right now are in deep oxygen debt, so I think we're just going to show you the scene here, and um, we'll get ready for the trophy presentation because, quite frankly, they're gassed. All I know is that they're very happy that they redeemed themselves after losing the SEC final to South Carolina, so all's right in the world. National champions and 4x4 champions. Dwight? 
Let's go. All right, we will be back to talk to the winning, winning team and wrap things up from Boston. For the third time in a row, the Arkansas Lady Razorbacks are national champions. Well, we're just getting word that the Arkansas 4x400 relay has been disqualified, and here's the reason why. Their leadoff runner, Kaylin Brown, the freshman from Arkansas, had two consecutive steps on the line. That's a no-no. So their winning effort gets erased, but they still had a cushion. So they win the overall team title by five over Florida. Georgia ends up third, Oregon fourth. And now it's John Anderson's turn down on the infield with the winning team. Thank you, Dwight Stones. Thank you, Boston, for a terrific NCAA Indoor Championship here at the track at New Balance. And Diane Turnham, a member of the NCAA's Track and Field Committee, Middle Tennessee State, is here to present the trophy. Yes, thank you so much. We'd love to thank all the fans who came out for an incredible sellout. But at this time, it's my pleasure, as a part of the NCAA Track Committee, to present this year's national championship to the University of Arkansas Razorback. <laughs> head coach Chris Johnson, uh, you got a lot of confetti in your life for a first year head coach. That's always a good sign. That's always a good sign. Um, what went right? Where was this thing won over the last two days? I mean, I, obviously, I think it was, it started today with the high jump, and then obviously the 400 meters, and one, two, three, then in the 200, six, seven, eight, and Destiny Hooven stepped up in the hurdles. So, I mean, it was an amazing day, and we knew we had to have an amazing day to pull this thing off. Let's talk about the 400 meter runners, because that's kind of the core of this squad, and what they did, and how they set the tone for this program. Well, these ladies came in and they worked hard each and every day, just like the rest of the team. But this is a special group. To be able to go one, two, three in the NC2A system uh, is nothing short of phenomenal. And we're just excited. Uh, hard work does pay off. First one for you. What's that mean? It's special. First year, first one. SECs, now the NC2As. Uh, I'm scared what's going to happen next. <laughs> <laughs> um, 50th for the school. How does that fit in, in in continuing the program of excellence at Arkansas? I think it's fitting. I mean, to walk in the shoes of a lot of great men and, and young ladies that got it done at the University of Arkansas and just to be a part of that is, is uh, fantastic. Uh, you said at SEC, I think the last words you said to me were, South Carolina, we, we owe you one. <laughs> I do. Okay. A any, any, any hesitation over that last curve? No, but just so we finish. We got a lick back. Dwight, <laughs> uh, right, I can't top that, so I'm just going to leave it to you. Arkansas championships under Chris Johnson, the 50th for the school. I can't, I can't top it either, John. And they got it done with 24 points in the 400. They won the high jump, fourth in the long jump, DMR and 60 hurdles, and then six points from three athletes in the 200. A fantastic men's and women's NCAA indoor championships. We were proud to bring it to you here from Boston. For John Anderson, Dan O'Brien, Lara Overton, and our great statisticians, Rich Benoit and Tom Lewis, I am Dwight Stones. We cannot thank you enough for joining us, and we also can't wait until outdoor season when we bring you the SEC Outdoors from Gainesville, Florida.